Maryland has won the toss and elected to receive the kickoff, and Massimo Manca, the freshman, will be kicking it off for Penn State, and George will get an opportunity right from the go to see what this Maryland offense will do. Manca last week kicked extremely well. All of his kickoffs, save one, went deep into the end zone. If there is any wind, it is slightly behind him. It's a line drive. And coming down and rolling past the return man and rolling into the end zone. And it will be a touchback. I thought it might have rolled on about the... It just caught the corner. Line. But apparently the ball was touched. I think the ball was touched about the 10-yard line by one of the up-back stands. Take a look at it, see if you can see. This is kind of a squib type kick. It's not a very good kick. And I think it hits number 19 right off his fingertips before it goes out of bounds. Right, right at the corner. It hit John Simmons, but an illegal procedure call against Penn State will bring it back. So Maryland almost got terrible field position starting off on their own six inch line and a mistake by John Simmons. He is the man who touched the ball at the 10 and let it roll out of bounds. Back deep for Maryland. Tim Quander, he's the deep man in the triple safety. So Monka will have to kick off once again, this time from his own 35. going to kick from the 35-yard line, and again, the wind is slight, but it is at his back. Gets off a boomer this time. Wander, four yards deep, will stay in there, and Maryland will get the football first and 10 on their own 20. This time, Maka really got the leg into it. Well, Stan, last week they were concerned about the fact that he kicked so deep is because he had a wind behind him. Today, there's absolutely no wind, so now we really know he's got a strong leg. There's the offensive line of Maryland, and strange as it might seem to the Pennsylvania people, everybody but the tight end is from the state of Pennsylvania. And that an offensive line, including the tight end, averages 256 pounds. That is large. Boomer Esaias in the quarterback. They line up in the eye. Nash, the fullback, joined to the deep man in the eye. Here's the give to Joyner. Hit in the backfield and dropped for a one-yard loss at the 19-yard line. Ken Kelly broke through the line of scrimmage to make the stop. It'll be second down and 11. Joyner is a junior. Uh, here we get a shot of Ken Kelly to the right of the screen from his weak side linebacker. Shoots the gap, puts Joyner down for a short loss. Kelly's shooting inside, making the tackle from inside out. The loss is one back to the 19, second down and 11. Wide receiver, split to the right side. Greg Hill back to throw the southpaw out in the flat to Nash at the 20 and up to the 25-yard line. Gain of six. It'll be third down and five yards to go. Esiason last year completed better than 50% of his passes. Threw for nine touchdowns. And there's part of Penn State's defense. You've got Kelly 98, the two town tackles 67, Oakfar 52, Hines, and Hamilton the hero back number 17. Defense. Third down, five yards to go. Esiason brings him out. Wide to the left is Russell Davis. He's their leading receiver. Straight drop back. Esiason looking, firing, and it is incomplete, underthrown. Well, that was a badly thrown ball, Stan. If uh, Hamilton saw it, he might have stepped in, made the interception, and he could have run it into the end zone. But uh, this Esiason is a big boy. He's about six, four and a half, and he's a left-hander. Back to punt is Alan Sadler. Last year, he averaged 37.4 yards per punt. Back deep for Penn State, a single safety, Kevin Bow at his own 30-yard line. We give you Maryland's last year stats because, remember, this is their opening game of the year. Penn State with 10 on the line of scrimmage. Good snap. Here comes the rush, and it is blocked. Got it. Penn State blocks the football and has it at the 11-yard line. Roger Jackson gets the block, Ashley, with the recovery. Stan, they must have known something because it's seldom that you put the rush on. Let's take a look at it. Here's the block. And watch it, Walter Ashley, number 37, gets the recovery. It's seldom that you put the block on on the first punt. 
Obviously something they scouted. A block. And credit going to Roger Jackson. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State at the Maryland 11. Receiver split either side. Give to Kurt Warner. He's got some room and bangs his way down to the four-yard line. Kurt Warner had the hole. Skidded off to the left and got inside the five close to the four. Mike Muller, one of the inside linebackers, made the tackle. George, you were saying before the game, if you're going to run against this wide tackle six, they're vulnerable up the middle, and if you can pop it, you're gone for a long game. That's, that's the weakness of the defense, right straight up the middle. Second down, three yards to go for a first, four for a touchdown. Again, the eye, one receiver, it's a double tight end. Warner again, down to the two, close to the one-yard line, and very close to the first down for Penn State. Well, it's early in the game, but off last week's showing, Penn State's offensive line looks like they're coming off the ball much better. Uh, there was a nice little crease, and that's all you have to give Curry Warner. He is a bit short. Third down, less than a yard to go for the first down, and a yard and a half to go for the touchdown. The ball is directly in the middle of the field. Now the power eye. In motion. Here's the give inside to Coles, and he is going nowhere. In fact, he may have lost a half a yard. That'll bring up fourth down, and a yard for the first down. Fourth and two for the touchdown. Mike Muller again, one of the down people, who will shift from linebacker to defensive lineman in that wide tackle six. And Joe Paterno is called for the field goal team. Massimo Manca will get the call. So they could not make the third and one. Well, uh, Maryland stiffened. They went into their goal line defense. They put Warner in motion as a decoy, but they were not fooled. It'll be spotted at the 10. Strangled. Directly in front of the goal post. It'll be a 20-yard attempt. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. So Manka with the three-pointer, a 20-yard field goal. Timeout on the field, the score. Penn State three, Maryland nothing. We'll be right back after this. Sitting cradle. Maka with a 20-yard field goal. Little kickoff. Again, Quander is deep at his own five-yard line. A line drive. Bouncing. Quander picks it up at the seventh. Up the middle of the 10, 15, got a hold of the outside, but cannot get there. Is in and dropped at the 24-yard line. Stu McMahon and Steve Scepter make the tackle. Maryland takes over first and 10 on their own 24. Well, that was a great opportunity for Penn State to get a touchdown there, uh, Stan, and uh, I hope it, there's not a letdown because Maryland stiffened and they ended up with only three points. Penn State wanted to prove they can run the football against that wide tackle six, and all three plays, although not the same, were run from guard to guard. First down and 10 yards to go, Maryland at their own 24-yard line. Throw set backfield. Boomer Esiason, number seven, the left-handed quarterback. Give to the tailback joiner. He's got a slidle across the 25, drives his way forward to the 28-yard line, where Dave Pappenroth brings him down. Nash with a strong run. It'll be second down and six yards to go. Maryland has thrown just one pass. That was incomplete. Bobby Ross, the new coach, most recently was an assistant with the Kansas City Chiefs. Before that, he coached five years at the Citadel. Russell Davis, wide to the right. Mike Lewis, wide to the left. Now Tice, number 82, the tight end, comes to the right side, making that the strong side. Second down and six. Pitch wide, Joyner to the 30-yard line and across near the 32. Gain of four, it'll be third down and two yards to go. Ken Kelly and Scott Radisick make the tackle. Well, you know, at the top of the show, we said we expected both coaches to come out throwing the ball, and so far, both of them, Maryland has stayed in the I formation most of the time, which is a running offense, and Penn State has not thrown the ball yet. Last year, Tice was the leading receiver, although Russell Davis, the wideout who now comes to the near side, averaged over 19 yards per catch. Third down and two, lining up in the eye. Now they split out and begin to a pro set. Tice again coming to the right side. Isaias and back to pass on third and two. Flip to Nash, he's got it. He, and they're gonna rule it incomplete. Had it for a moment, was hit, 
by Al Harris, who knocked it loose. The pass will go incomplete. A bit of a surprise call on third and two, and that'll force a punt. Well, that actually wasn't a bad call. It was a good call because the man was open. I think he would have, if he could have held on to the ball, he would have made that first down. So Al Harris knocks the ball loose, and Maryland will be forced to punt again. Penn State again with 10 men up in the line of scrimmage. They shift at the line. The uh, snap is a bit high. Here it comes. But Sadler gets it off. Bow takes it at his 28. Slips and falls and will be stopped at the 29-yard line. Joe Wilkins provided coverage on the play. Bow tried to make a move, but as he did, his feet gave way. It's a one-yard return. Penn State takes over at their own 29-yard line. Well, Penn State now has an opportunity to show their offense. First time they had the ball, of course, was after the block punt. They ran three plays, gaining nine yards, setting up a fourth and one. They went for the field goal. Todd Blackledge brings him up. Warner and Williams the backfield. A slot to the left with Kenny Jackson. Play fake. Blackledge to throw. It is almost intercepted and incomplete. Almost, almost intercepted. intercepted by Eubanks, who had the ball in his hands and a second opportunity. There was excellent coverage there, and, and uh, Todd kind of fought the ball. Howard Eubanks had four interceptions a year ago. He is a linebacker, but don't be confused by terminology because in that wide tackle six, you've got linebackers who are really defensive ends and vice versa. They drop off as they do in the professionals, but there's four big down linemen on the line of scrimmage, and they dare you to run the football. All right, Warner now is a wing to the right, Jackson left, Garrity right, the only back is Williams. He gets the football. Across the 30 and out to the 32. A gain of three for John Williams. Muller again on the tackle. Along with Tyrone Furman. That'll make it third down and seven yards to go. We want to remind you that announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems. And any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this game without the express written consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. Did we get paid too? I didn't know that. Fringe benefit. Third down and seven. Slot to the left. Black. Straight drop back. Rushes on. In trouble. Scrambles and he's hit from behind and dropped for a loss back at the 28 yard line. Mark Duda, number 98, came in from the outside and got Black with a three yard loss. It'll bring up fourth down and ten and a half yards to go for a first down. That time, Maryland only rushed four people, dropped off seven, had good pass coverage, there was nobody to throw the ball to. I'd have to call that a coverage sack, George, because Blackwood did have time. Ralph Giacomero to kick. Ooh. Averaging over 39 yards of punt. What a boomer he gets back into this time. Mike Lewis calls for the fair catch at the 16-yard line. of over 50 yards. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 3, Maryland nothing. We'll be back right after this. That's one of the few times I've seen that scoreboard go out. A malfunction. Maybe I yelled too loud on the block punt. Blew a circuit somewhere. George, any surprises thus far? Neither team has really had much of an opportunity to show their offense. Well, we said both teams are very strong defensively against the run, and that's the way it's been so far. Penn State had an excellent opportunity on, on recover on the block kick, and they couldn't put it in. So that, that proves that Maryland is a strong defensive team. If you are the team that has just suffered the block punt, meaning Maryland, is that a great booster for your confidence to give a football team the ball on the 11 yard line and get out of it with just three points? Yes, it is because you know, say, hey, we can stop these guys. They, they you know, uh, here they are. We give them an opportunity to get in there. We held, and uh, it really makes that defense uh, regroup and, and uh, solidify. <coughs> well, the referee coming back on the field, and we may have this time, at least for the present, kept on the field. And we'll do our best to give you a, some kind of an idea as to how much time we've got. Nine thirty-five left in the first quarter. Penn State leading three to nothing. And after the fifty-five yard punt by Giacomero, Maryland has the football. First down and ten at their own seventeen yard line. Pro set backfield. Messias and back to throw. Pass in the flat, and it is overthrown. Intended for John Tice, also out there. 
was Mike Lewis. Biondi was on the coverage, although none was necessary. Into the game comes Greg Hill. They are alternating receivers. Greg Hill, number four. Mike Lewis, number 11. Maryland does not have real good field position right now. Stan, his mouth throwing from this spot is a little dangerous. Uh, Penn State put a strong four-man rush on him that time. This time they come out of the eye. They have used that, and they have shifted out of it. Here's to get the joint of the tailback, a slight crack, but he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. They close the hole very quickly. John Walder coming in to make the tackle. John Walder last week played tight end, but this week in practice, they switched him over to defensive end behind Ken Kelly and Dave Ofar also in on the tackle. Joyner last year gained 187 yards, three point average, did not play a great deal as a tailback. Remember, they had Wysocki, so he did not see much playing time. Third down and 10 yards to go, this time in a pro set. Here's the sprint draw to Joyner, 20, 23, 24 yard line. It is a gain of seven, but it'll leave them three yards shy of the first down, and once again, Alan Sadler will be forced to punt. Harry Hamilton, the hero, came in to make the tackle. Uh, what's number 99? This is Mike Garrett, a defensive end. He comes in too wide. Joyner runs that uh, drawer up inside of him and almost made the first down. This time, Penn State sends two back. Bow and Kenny Jackson. Sadler gets it away, and it's a high floating kick coming to Bow at his 23. Right side, 30. Hit and drop at the 32-yard line. Brian Baker and Victor Kronberg fumble. fumble the football, and Maryland is recovered. I thought they, Kevin Glover makes the recovery. I thought that they might whistle the forward progress dead, but Bow fighting for extra yardage, coughs up the football. And that happens sometimes. You're trying to make an extra yard, and you let the ball get loose. Now, Maryland's an excellent opportunity here to, to do something. So both teams have gotten a turnover. Penn State blocking a punt, setting up a field goal. Now, Maryland recovers Bow's fumble on the punt. First down and 10 yards to go at the Penn State 32-yard line. Receivers split either side, out of the eye. Joiner, left guard, not much. Perhaps got to the 30, a gain of a couple. Greg Gattuso made the initial hit. Roger Jackson coming in to clean up. It'll be a gain of two, make it second down and eight. Stan, we're going to see a lot of different numbers in the game because I'm sure Joe's going to substitute a lot because of the heat, hoping to keep his kids fresh for the second half, or especially the last quarter. But as I said before, both teams are going to find difficulty running the ball today. Hill comes in with a play, replacing Mike Lewis. Again, the eye backfield. Man in motion is Russell Davis to the near side. Play fake, the size rolling right, looking, throwing, and way overthrown. Almost hitting the stands. Mark Robinson on the coverage. Russell Davis, the man in motion, and Greg Hill were in the area, but too tall for everybody. That'll bring up third down and eight yards to go. If Siason threw the ball away, he saw that Hill was uh, uh, covered very closely, and he did the wise thing through that bound. Wide to the right side. Let's take a look at the Penn State defensive alignment. Let's see if we get a blitz on this play. They might come with that draw play again, Stan. It was fairly successful last time. Here comes the rush. Pass over the middle. It is caught and dropped by Mike Tice, or rather John Tice, the tight end. And that was a break for Penn State because he was open, the ball was right in his hands, and not only would he have made the first down, but he would have made a lot more. The end of the game will come Jess Atkinson. Last year, Atkinson hit on 12 out of 21 pat, uh, field goals. And he will attempt now about a 48-yarder. Esiason is the holder, so it's the quarterback, and you know that that can always cause a problem. A sidewinder, Atkinson, a sophomore. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. A 48-yard field goal by Jess Atkinson has tied the football game. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 3, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Number 5. And Tony Mumford on the far side. 
Here's Atkinson's approach. A line drive coming to Bow. One yard deep. He'll come out of there with it. 10, 20, hit and drop like a shot at the 22 yard line. Thus far, Maryland has shown good kick coverage. Penn State will take over on their 21-yard line. This will be the third offensive possession for Penn State. The first time they gained nine yards in three plays and kicked a field goal. The second time it was the three down and out before the punt. And neither Maryland team has made a first down. That's right. We have played nine minutes plus in the first quarter. First down and ten yards to go. Black short drop, looking, throwing, man open. Gary over to the sideline. Gil Hoffman provided coverage on the play, but had the pass been there, Garrity would have had a reception. Uh, number 77 for Maryland, uh, Corvino put a heavy rush on him. He beat his man. He made Todd throw the ball a little early. First Blackledge on the play took the short drop that's designed, of course, to prevent that sort of thing. Well, you have the only weaknesses in this type of defense is up the middle or throwing the ball. Second down and 10. Penn State their own 21 yard line. Pro set backfield. Warner. Sweep right. Got a block. 25, 30, and across the 30 and out near the 35 yard line. Unless he stepped out of bounds earlier. No, he did not. So give Kurt Warner a gain of 13 yards out to the 34. First down and 10 yards to go. Joe Wilkins ran him out of bounds. And that is the longest game from scrimmage in this game. Uh, he gets a great block at the, on the defensive end. Now watch him. Normally you shouldn't get outside this defense. All right, the pulling guard got a block on the corner man, enabling Kurt to turn the corner. First and 10. Penn State at their own 34-yard line after the 13-yard game by Kurt Warner. Here's the sprint draw to Warner. Got a hole of the right tackle, 40, 42-yard line. A gain of nine, it'll be second and one. Mark Duda and Joe Wilkins again on the tackle, but Warner picks up 22 in the last two plays. It'll be second and one. Well, that's what you have to do. Quick hitters up the middle before those two defensive men over the offensive guards can, can adjust and read the offensive block. It's the largest crowd ever to see a Maryland football game, 83,777. Second down and one. Penn State with a down to play with here. They won't play with it. Williams giving a hit and drop for a loss of 41. A strong play by Eric Wilson, who drops Williams for the one-yard loss, and now it is third and two. Well, Wilson, the linebacker, come down, got on the line of scrimmage, plug. Ball carry had no place to go. This wide tackle six gives the inside linebackers a lot of freedom. And a lot of times you will see them come like Wilson did there, shot the gap. Awfully tough defense to run against consistently. This time, Penn State will come out with a slot. Jackson in motion. Blackledge to throw. Wide that open. Time, wide open. It is caught and complete for a first down to Kenny Jackson at the Maryland 39-yard line. Eubanks made the tackle, but Jackson was wide open in the middle as they decoyed on the Motion back to the near side. Now to watch Jackson, he comes in motion towards the formation. They swing one out. Blackledge does a great job of stepping up into the pocket and putting the ball, ball on the money. Watch, and there he goes. There's an isolation. Makes an inside cut. He is wide open. First down, Penn. First and 10 at the 39. Back to a standard pro set formation. Blackledge to throw again. Got time. In the flat. McCloskey incomplete. Along the sideline pass, a bit tall. J.D. Gross provided a little coverage on the play. Goes as an incompletion, second down and 10. Stan, I'd like to make a point on a day like today when it's very human, the hand sweat. And that time it looked like the ball came off his palm and took off. 81 degrees, which is fine if you're playing in Dallas, but for Beaver Stadium it's a bit warm and it is extremely humid. McCloskey still looking for his first reception of the year. Second down and 10 Penn State at the 39 of Maryland. Kevin Campbell in the game, splitting wide to the left side. Here's a pitch wide. Warner tries to cut, loses his footing. He'll gain just a yard to the 38. It'll be third down and nine. Mike Corvino covered Warner on the play, but again, we have seen twice now Penn State back slipping on their cuts. Uh, Maryland's defensive line has excellent pursuit down the line of scrimmage. The man who really made that play is that preseason All-American pick, 
Gerns Brown, number 78, he turned the play back into Corvino for no gain. All right, Penn State facing a third and long, third down and nine yards to go at the Maryland 39-yard line. High backfield, Garrity left, Jackson in motion, on the right side, play fake, Blackwood with time, now he's rushed, now he's hit, and now he's dropped back at the 43-yard line. Gernis Brown, again, on the tackle with the sack, dropping Blackledge for a loss back to the 43. Well, he has more than enough time. He just can't find a receiver. Now, Kenny Jackson is open for a minute, and Todd hesitates. He starts, pulls the ball back to throw, pulls it back down, and Brown makes the sack. Maryland does not believe that Penn State's going to punt because there is nobody back. Now Hoffman goes back and Jock Amaro tries to lift it over his head. Fair catch called for and taken at the 10-yard line. Maryland ran up in a short punt formation, figuring there may be a fake on, but there is a flag on the play. I think Jock Amaro would like a chance to kick that over. Well, it still, you know, puts Maryland in bad field position. It was, third, it was fourth down and 14 yards to go, so there's no change on down and yardage. Now they're going to mark from the spot of the fair catch. A clip called on Maryland, so they'll mark it from the spot of the catch. It moves it back just outside the five-yard line, and Maryland will start with four field position just outside their five-yard But as we say, field position is everything in this, this game, and it's what a great kicker can do for it. 244 to play in the first quarter. Ball game is tied at 3-3. And we've had a defensive struggle so far. First down, 10 yards to go, Maryland, all at their own six-yard line. In the eye. Siason, the joiner, gets a hole and a good one out to the 10-yard line. Harry Hamilton came up to make the initial hit on the play. A pretty good game for Joyner. A five-yard game. Call it second down and five to go. That, well, that play looks like it was going to go off tackle, but it's designed to cut back against the grain. Now, Maryland has one slight advantage. They've had the chance to scout Penn State in their first game, know some of their tendencies, and Penn State doesn't know what Maryland's going to do. And, of course, there's a great deal of continuity to the Penn State program, whereas Maryland has just changed coaches. Esiason, the Joyner, Rolling, he finds a man open. It's Tice, the tight end. He's got it, and he's out near the 19-yard line for a first down. John Tice made the reception, the big tight end. He is 6'6 and 240. Compared to his brother, Mike, the quarterback, he's a midget. This is John Tice, a big tight end from East Islip, Long Island. Now, he's wide open in the flat. He makes the first down, but last week against Temple, Penn State had a lot of problems with their flat coverage because, as Temple hit a lot of their backs coming out. It's a gain of 11 and a first down. And the Terp likes that. He's got to be dying inside that thing. Second, a first down. Rushes on to Siason going for the home run along the sideline. Incomplete. Intended. Or the wide receiver, Ron Fazio. Roger Jackson, step by step with him. Pass goes incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Would have taken a near perfect throw to make that completion. Jackson had him covered from the inside, ran stride for stride with him. That's the first, the second time that Esiason has aired it out a little bit closer to a completion on that play. 1.39 to play in the first quarter. The game tied at 3 3. Maryland second and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Joyner shifts out of there to a pro set. Joyner. Left tackle gets some running room and gets out to the 25-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be third down and six. Dave Papenroth made the tackle. So far, the fullback, John Nash, who last year averaged four yards a carry, gained 454 yards, did not, has not seen much action. They try to run a joiner off tackle. He spins back to the inside. Papenroth is there, puts him down. Len Lynch and Nash made the blocks on the play to get him the four, third down and six, this time in the eye. Esiason to throw, flip out the joiner. He's got blockers ahead of him, 25, 30. He's out to the 35-yard line. It's a gain to the 35 and a first down for Maryland. Stan, that is actually what we call a rhythm screen. Now, if we could see on a replay, the whole off the offensive guard tackle to that side released. They ran the tight end down. He did a little curl. I, Esiason looks at his tight end, sees the linebacker there, now dumps it off to Joyner. Now watch, he's got two people out in front of him. 
That could have been a big play. George does the back yell to his lineman when they head upfield. He's supposed to. First down and 10, Maryland at their own 35 yard line. Joiner again finds more running room off his own right tackle and gets out to the 40 yard line. Dave Ofar made the tackle, but Joiner is able to find the creases in the Penn State defensive line. He picks up another five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. So far of the two offenses, although we have yet to see a touchdown or even a drive of any kind, it has been Maryland, which has done most of the moving of the football. Time running down in the first quarter, and that will be the last play we'll get in here in the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter of action. The score, Penn State 3, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Second quarter action, Maryland with the football, second down and five yards to go. Draw it in just a bit. Here's the pitch wide to Nash, cuts back into the 40, 45 and across near the 46 yard line and that will be good for another Maryland first down. Harry Hamilton made the stop on this particular drive. Maryland has driven George from their own six yard line. Well, they shifted the tight end to the short side of field, brought Davis the flanker in like a wing back and they ran into the power, into the short side of the field. Nash made a nice cut back up inside. Joe Paterno wondering what's happening to his defense. This drive has gone 40 yards now for Maryland. I'm wondering, George, when you see that tight end shift, as a defensive player, do you assume that's where it's coming? Well, it's according to what the, the strategy behind it is often on a running down, yes. If they know that you like to favor, some defenses will favor the wide side of the field, which is good, good makes good sense. They will shift the tight end to the short side of the field, try to set up some kind of a, a wing relationship with the flanker and run into the side. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 3, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. <coughs> Leading out of break. We're back with second quarter action with Penn State in control of the football. Lead in out of break. We're back with second quarter action with Maryland in control of the football. Eighty three thousand seven hundred seventy seven on hand. Boomer Esaias from calling timeout and they always say he goes to the line of scrimmage. He didn't like what he saw. Did anybody ever think that maybe he loved what he saw and wanted to tell his coach. Nobody ever says that first down and ten yards to go Maryland at their forty six yard line. In the pro set. Esaias the joiner he's hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Ken Kelly. No game. That was basically the same thing they did before. They come back into the sidelines, presuming that Penn State would overshift the defense to the wide side of field. Now, let's take a look. Joyner is a fine-looking running back, just hands it off, but there's no place to go, and down he goes. But you, uh, one thing that's revealing, uh, Harry Hamilton, this free safety, has made an awful lot of tackles. That means that the ball carriers are getting past the line of scrimmage, and that, that's not good. Joyner is a junior, 5'10", 196 pounds. Second down, a long 10. Roll to the left. Esiason is left-handed. He's looking. He's going to take off with the ball. He fumbles it out of bounds. Now, the break for Maryland there is he would have been run out of bounds to the 47 after a gain of two, but they have to give Maryland the forward progress as to where the ball went out, and it went out on the Penn State 48. So what would have been a two-yard game becomes a seven-yard game. Not only that, Ken... Let's watch the bottom of the screen. Ken Kelly makes a mistake. He puts the blitz on, but he comes too much to the inside. You got to keep the ball carrier to your inside. Esiason gets around him and turns it into a decent play. So it is third down and three yards to go, Maryland, at the Penn State 48 yard line. Third down and three. Esiason to throw the rushes on. He throws it out to Joyner. Joyner's got a block. He's got the first down to the 45 to the 40, and he's into the 39 yard line. Willie Joyner is just running like a wild man. Mark Robinson finally brought him down. 
But it is a nice game for Maryland, good for a first down, and they are now at the Penn State 39 yard line. And the science and showed a lot of poise there. He was just about to get a hit. He dumped it off to join it. Penn State's tackling is not crisp. <clears throat> you can see the stats. Maryland, 57 overall yards. Penn State only 44. First down and 10. Here's the pitch wide. Hit at the line of scrimmage and falling forward for a one yard gain. Flag on a joiner. There. There's a flag on the play. Ashley came in to make the stop. The flag is in the Penn State secondary. Actually, the stats were not conclusive because Maryland has really gotten this drive going. You can add another 20 or 30 yards rushing on to that stat. Here's a penalty against Maryland. It'll be a clip against Maryland, and we talk about a drive killer. Those big ones really hurt. That'll bring it back into Maryland territory. Well, now it also changes the strategy for the coach. They were in an area where you, you have, would have to guess whether they're going to pass a run or play action pass, which eventually they're going to have to do now. They're, they're back in, across the 50, changes the whole complexion of the game. After the penalty, the ball has moved back to Maryland's own 46-yard line. First down and 25 yards to go. Game tied 3-3, 12.54 to play in the second quarter. Slot to the right with the double wide receivers. Asias and Long count at the draw play. And a good gain across right tackle to Vernon Carter, who's in there for Joyner, and Joyner into Penn State uh, territory near the 45-yard line. Vernon Carter spelling Willie Joyner, who has been most of the offense. Ken Kelly made the tackle. Spencer Stryber comes in as a wide receiver, number 15. He will come to the near side. Russell Davis to the right side. It's the eye backfield. Asias, the throw, man open, into intercepted. intercepted. Harry Hamilton, 50, and he's run out of bounds to the 45-yard line. The pass was for Tice. He was hit. He coughed up the football. Maryland is claiming the ball hit the ground, but it'll go as an interception for Harry Hamilton and credit the hit to Mark Robinson. Let's see if we can see. He takes it off his shoe top. Now, it was the rush who did it. Get the rush from his backside. There's the ball. Clean interception. Hamilton tries to get up the sideline. That takes Penn State out of trouble. That's called the immaculate interception. First down and 10 Penn State at the Maryland 46 yard line. High backfield slot to the left. Man in motion to the near side is Kenny Jackson. 45, 40, 35, inside the 35 to the 32 yard line, and a first down. I don't think that was more than a stand. It was Keita Nichols come in, Joe substituting a lot now. That's the best executed offensive play for, uh, for Penn State today. It's a draw play. Uh, they put two wide receivers. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen. Maryland loosened up. There's the nice cut. It's a good block by uh, Joe Coles, number 20. Good first down. Again, he's got some more running room, and he bangs it inside the 30th down to the 29-yard line. A gain of nearly four. It'll be second and six. Duda, Mark Duda, get on the tackle. Well, one thing that's been significant so far, Penn State has done a lot of substitutions, has put in a lot of substitutions, and Maryland has played with the same unit on defense. That could take its toll late in the second half. And wide to the right is Jackson, Garrity to the left. Up man in the eye is Joe Coles. Nichols playing tailback, second and six. Fake draw, blacklist to throw. Got time, fires, and it is caught by McCloskey at the 20. He's down to the 16-yard line, and a first down for Penn State. That's all I can say. It's about time they got their tight end into the passing game. He has been open, and in fact, actually, Todd was a little late getting him the ball, or he could have gone another 10 yards. They're, they're ignoring the tight end when Penn State puts those two great receivers to one side of the field. Now let's watch the little fake of a inside draw play going left to right. There he is. McCloskey turns up field. Nice play. First down and 10 Penn State at the Maryland 16-yard line. They give inside to Coles and Coles banks out of the 17-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Duda and Gurnis Brown make the tackle. Previous play. 
Mike McCloskey with his first reception of the year. On a nice drag pattern, you wait for the wide receivers to clear out, and the tight end comes across the middle. Garrity out. Wide to the right is Jackson. Second down and seven. Pro set backfield. Blackledge. Play fake. Back to throw. Looking man open. Incomplete and overthrown for Joel Coles at the six yard line. Mike Muller provided coverage on the play. The pass falls incomplete, bringing up third down and seven yards to go. Yeah, I'll say it once more. I don't know whether it's the moisture, but Blackledge does not seem to be whipping that ball as he usually does. Bobby Ross, the new Maryland head coach, coaching his first game as the Maryland head coach, last year an assistant with the Kansas City Chiefs. 24 and 31 with the Citadel. Third down, seven, Penn State at the 12 yard line of Maryland. Ball game tied at three. Blackman to throw in the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Kenny Jackson. What a shot by Lendl Jones, the cornerback, forcing Jackson to give up the football. And yeah, that's a poorly thrown ball. Let's take a look at it. He throws behind Jackson, or else they got a TD. Watch Kenny. He has to reach back to his left, and he left himself quite vulnerable. If the pass is in there, of course, Jackson can then shield off the defender with his body. So Manko comes in to kick and attempt a 29-yard field goal. Slight angle, left to right. Balls down. Kick is up. And it is good. So Manko, with his second field goal of the afternoon, has given Penn State the lead once again, 6-3. to three. There's a timeout on the action. The score, Penn State 6, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Ten fourteen to play in the first half. Massimo Manka to kick off after having successfully converted his second field goal. Penn State leading 6-3. Quander, Tim Quander is back deep. Mock approaches and gets off. Kick to Quander, two yards deep. He'll come out of there with it. Five, 10, 15, up the middle of the 20 and dropped in an ankle tackle at the 22-yard line. Quander slams the ball down and he is right because he had some room had he gotten by Rogers Alexander, the freshman who got him around the ankle. So the return is 23 yards out to the 22, first down and 10, Maryland. Last drive, George Penn State showed some signs of moving the football. They showed a few sparks, but the, both passes are off. Blackledge is two for seven for 33 yards, and uh, uh, Siason is four for 11 for 36 yards. Maryland with the football at their own 22-yard line. Quick out. Lewis got it at the 30. Looks for a block. Gets one to the 35. That'll be a gain of 13 yards and a first down. Roger Jackson and Dan Biondi come in to make the tackle. But a well-conceived and designed play by Maryland. Well, it's a gutsy play down when you're on uh, your own 20-something. The quick out, quick in to Lewis. He makes a nice run out of it. Lewis is a senior, six feet even, 189 pounds. 24 receptions, three touchdowns a year ago. First down and 10 yards to go, Maryland. That's their own 35. Might be an audible here. Size in the throw. He's flushed out of there, chased out of there by Kelly. He's hit and dropped from behind by Kelly. And what a play to catch up from behind. Well, there's Ken Kelly turned a poor play into a great play. He's kind of rushing the pass a little too tight to the inside. And Esiason is rolling out behind him. But this time he caught it from behind. Let's watch again at the bottom of the screen. Now watch Ken. You'll see him coming over here. Caught the inside. I oh, know that that was uh, Garrick I caught in there. And here's Kelly chasing from behind. A loss on the play, but Penn State is marking backwards, so there is a penalty on Penn State. And it's a defensive holding call. First down. First down, Al. First right, today's referee is Marcel Marceau. Well, we do know it's a holding call and a five-yard gain for Maryland, so make it first and five, and that nullified a three-yard loss. 
So Maryland, as Joe Paterno watches on, is at their own 40, first down and five. So an interesting series now. Maryland having the advantage of first and five. Man in motion, pitch wide. Halfback pass, Joyner is broken up extremely nicely by Dave Pappenroth. Well, that's an unusual play to, to run a halfback option play into the sidelines because it doesn't have much time to develop, but it was there. But Pappenroth dropped off from his linebacker spot and made a great defensive play, knocking the ball away. That's what they're trying to take advantage of, of course. Pappenroth seeing run coming up to the line, but he reacted very nicely. That's a tough play for Joyner, being right-handed and going to the wrong side. Especially to this, towards the sideline. Second down and five yards to go. Man in motion, left to right. Fake, pass out. It's to Hill, to the 40, and out to the 43-yard line. And again, Ken Kelly dropping off. Flag made on the, the tackle play. and a flag on the play. I would presume that'd have to be a clip against Maryland because Roger Jackson did a super job at turning it in, unless it's a faceman. Wait for the call. It will be a gain of three if the play were to stand. They're calling the Penn State captain over. Ken Kelly comes over for a conversation. Penalty. We will penalize from this spot five yards. It'll be second down and ten for him. You take the play, it's to be here, it'll be third and two. You went second and ten, right? Do you notice the, how the official kind of helps the captains make their decisions? That's true. They, they really do. Is that a commonplace thing? I'm rather surprised the inflection in his voice. Yes, yes, they do. And they do it for both teams. They know the kids all keyed up emotionally. They want to give them an opportunity to make the right decision. It's too bad that guy wasn't there when Adler Haynes said, we'll kick to the clock in that AFL championship game. He could have used some help there. All right, the ball is marched back to the 35-yard line, so we're at second down. <laughs> And 10 yards to go. Wide to the left comes Russell Davis. Back to throws Esiason. Looking. Scrambles out of the pocket. Here he fumbles the football. It's loose. And Penn State has the football. Greg Gattuso has it. Penn State. First down and 10 in Maryland territory. And he just flat out dropped it. Dan, I'd like to make a point. I think I'm correct. I think the humidity causing moisture to gather on the hands of the quarterback because he just out dropped it. And let's take a look. Now watch, he tries to scramble off to his right. The ball just comes loose. He wasn't hit prior to his being hit. And it's very human out there. The ball gets moisture on it and the hand gets moisture on it. Well, after the fumble by Esiason and the recovery by Gattuso, Penn stay with the ball. First down at their own, or rather at the Maryland 25 yard line. Motion near side. Here's the sprint run of Warner looking to get outside. Makes a nice run down near the 22 yard line. Not bad because there wasn't much there. Mike Corvino and Joe Wilkins made the tackle. Then with Penn State should try when they, when they run a, a hash mark like that. And first and second down. Berlin is given a man to man coverage. Playing real tough up front. They sure to try to hit the man on the sidelines deep and over the middle. I think they could get a score. In the eye. Poles, the front man, second down and seven. Motion near side with Kenny Jackson. Pitch wide, Warner looks for the block, does not get it, and he's hit and dropped. Behind the line of scrimmage, no, the play was dead. All the way back at the 27-yard line, Joe Olisi came in nicely and made the play, and Coles missed the block he had to make. Well, this is Olisi from his outside linebacker spot. They put motion, and they run into motion, which sometimes is tough. Now, at least he plays off. He's only 190 pounds. To get outside a wide tackle six is very difficult. Hans actually pushed him in the right direction, and Coles was, uh, pushed, uh, was not able to get to him. He pushed him out of range. Third down, long yardage, third and 12. Here's the blitz. Here's the screen to Warner. Got a blocker ahead. The 20, 15, he's got a bounds at the 12-yard line. He's got the first down. Well, that was a good call. I, uh, I haven't been uh, that happy with the play selection so far, but that was a good call. They anticipated a Maryland rush. Now, Todd fakes this well, looks off, takes his time, dumps it off to Warner, and that's where you want. That's Spiro, 56, makes a great block on Elisi, number 43, big first down for Penn State. Mike Muller, number 53, was the man coming. You saw it on the replay. And they threw it over him, and that opened it up. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State at the Maryland 12-yard line. They lead 6-3. 
719 first uh, pass. Here's a get to Warner, and he gets a yard to the 11-yard line, and Muller, the linebacker, of whom we were just speaking, comes in and makes the tackle on Warner. I think Penn State should try to run a little bit like Maryland has done to the short side of the field because that time Maryland overshifted its line to the wide side of the field and Penn State <coughs> ran right up into the teeth of the defense. Kevin Bow comes out of the game. And Rocky Washington is wide to the left side. Garrity wide to the right side. Split backs. Blackledge play fake. He's rushed. He throws in the end zone. Touchdown! Kurt Warner! Great throw, great catch. The ball is behind Warner, but when you're a great athlete, you can do everything. Looked like Rocky Flyer in a Super Bowl two years ago. Coming out of the backfield, same type of catch to the bottom of your screen. This is not a really great play. To, there's a rush on there by number 53, Muller. Now watch this catch. It turns his back completely around. TD. Ball was well thrown, and just a great catch by Warner as. Massimo Manka attempts the extra point. Ball's up. And it is good. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 13, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Six thirty-eight to play in the first half. 11-yard touchdown pass from Todd Blackledge to Kurt Warner. As Penn State on top, 13 to three. Line drive hitting. Wander at the seven. Hit and drop at the 20. Good coverage by the Penn State kickoff team. Freshman Rogers Alexander with his second tackle on kick coverage gives the football to Maryland at their own 20 yard line. Well, all the scoring has been a result of turnovers, and actually, Maryland has played pretty good defense so far, Stan. Indeed, they have. That time, the last drive, Penn State able to take advantage of the aggressiveness of the Maryland defense. Throwing the screen to Warner, a big play, and also on the touchdown catch. Esiason rolling left. He's rushed. He's hit. And he is run out of bounds. The 11-yard line. A flag is down. Uh, I think they're going to call face mask, and I think this is a poor call. I don't believe he ever grabbed it. He touched it, and there's a big difference. Uh, the defensive player from Penn State, if it's if that's the call. It would have been a nine-yard loss as Penn State again putting pressure on Esaias and forcing let's, the let's roll take out of bounds. Now, does he hang on to it? Yeah, he has it a little, a little too long. That's a no-no. Joe Hines, defensive tackle who made the excellent play to chase Esaias out of bounds, grabbed him by that face mask, which does tend to slow you down. <laughs> Well, that's the time you don't want to do when you have a guy trapped for a 10-yard loss, but it's an instinctive thing that a, a defender does. Nobody does it on purpose. That's well, a gain of five, so it makes it first and five. Joe Hines, the junior defensive tackle, 6'2", 248 from Cleveland, Ohio. Second down and five. Joyner, right side, cuts inside, gets out to the 30, and he'll have his first down. Joyner picks his holes very nicely. Dan Biondi and Scott Radisick make the tackle, but not before he picks up six in the first down. Well, he tried to get up inside, took it outside, it was shut off, and he found a little crease in the inside, and he went up and made his first down. I'm most impressed with him, George. He's a very good running back. So, Maryland with the first down. As the clock runs down to six minutes to play in the first half, Penn State leading 13 to three. First and 10, Maryland, their own 30-yard line. Play fake, Esiason, hit. Spins away, finds a receiver, and it is incomplete. Intended for Russell Davis. Good shot by Roger Jackson. The pass been a bit lower. He might have had it. But Jackson made him give up the football. Incomplete second and ten. Joe Hines. Uh, that, what, I think it's number 63, Todd Mullis, or it's Hines again. Now, you, you see, both of them are reaching. When you got a quarterback pinned in, you got to make body contact. You reach, he ducks up inside, and he almost got a good completion out of it. After looking at the replay, Davis should have had the ball, and I think Bobby Ross probably feels the same way. Slot to the left. Asias in the throw. With time, it is caught over the middle, out to the 37, 38-yard line. The big tight end, John Tice, 6'6", 240. 
And I started to say earlier, compared to his brother, Mike, he's a midget. His brother, Mike, was 6'8 and played quarterback for Maryland two years ago. He's playing tight end in the professional league right now. But what Penn State uh, right now is doing, Stan, is they're mixing up their defense is much better there. They're playing soft, then they're blitzing, they're coming from one side to the other, and Maryland's a little confused. The gain is seven, make it third down and three yards to go Maryland at their own 37-yard line. Here's the quick drop and a pass out in the flat. Complete to Davis out at the 44-yard line. That'll be good for the first down. Roger Jackson and Al Harris pushed them out of bounds, but again they go to that quick out pattern for a first down. What's a gutsy call because you make one mistake and now you give up six points, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Roger Jackson might pick one off before the day's over. Solt, Ron Solt, who was from Wilkes-Barre, and a player that Joe Paterno highly recruited, on the sideline, he's the starting left guard. First down at 10 Maryland, their own 45-yard line. Siason looking, firing deep. It is incomplete, and interference will be called on Harry Hamilton, and justifiably so. The pass intended for Russell Davis, but Hamilton had grabbed him around the legs before the ball came. The ball was overthrown a little bit. But you cannot touch him. Now let's watch him. He'll break to the inside on a deep post. Now Hamilton's chasing him. He's afraid there's going to be re a, a reception and knocks him down. That is the biggest gain of the day for Maryland all the way down to the 16-yard line of Penn State. I want to see if Penn State's defense can tighten and hold Maryland at this position. If they do, they might have an easier second half. First down and 10 yards to go. Messiah's in the throw. Not time. A lot of time. He's got a lot of room to run, but he throws in the end zone. Incomplete overthrow. Intended for Emerson. Daryl Emerson. Had Messiah's tucked it under and gone. He might have had a touchdown. But once again, Stan, Penn State rushers are getting caught too much to the inside. They got to get a little deeper so he cannot roll out and get outside him because then you put the defensive back in a bind. You don't know whether to come up or not. And if he comes up, the receiver's wide open. Pass falling incomplete. Again, he did have room to run. This time they go to a slot to the right side. Pro set backfield with Joyner and Nash. Here's the gift to Joyner. He's got room. He's to the 10. He's down to the 7 and near the 6-yard line and close to the first down. Well, they shouldn't be able to get away with that. That was a simple cross buck action to the weak side. They double teamed the tackle, kicked out on the linebacker, and it was a gigantic hole. They're fortunate that didn't go for a touchdown. Let's watch it. Nobody there. Harris gets caught way out to it, outside, leaving a big gaping hole. Gain of nine. It'll be third down and one yard to go for a first down at the Penn State seven-yard line. Motion. Here's the give. First down to the three. The two is Nash, and he's got the first down at the two-yard line. First and goal, Maryland. Radisic and Hamilton made the tackle, but not before Nash, the senior out of Baltimore, picks up five and a first down inside the two. Stan, I think our fans can see Penn State's defense continues to overpenetrate, getting too deep into Maryland's backfield, and the backs are cutting up inside and finding creases and making good yardage. And a good job by the Maryland backs. It's really that simple. First down and goal inside the two. Nash goes nowhere. Stone wall at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a happy. It'll be second down and goal. The clock running with three minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first half. They better be careful to watch Isaiason on a keeper. He's got the ability to run. Has done it in the past. Second down and goal from about a yard and a half away. Maryland has been going with a double tight end down here. Nash is the up man. Joiner is the back man. Got a wing to the right. In motion and back the other way. Here's a pitch to Joiner. Got a block. Touchdown, Maryland. Willie Joiner. Two yard run. And Maryland with a touchdown. It closes it to 13 to 9. There's the play. Good cut. Good block. He wanted that touchdown. He smelled it. And they may be going for two here. They've got a strange configuration. 
Now they come back to a more conventional line up at the line of scrimmage. They had everybody but the holder and receiver in the center off to one side, but Atkinson apparently will try it straight. Kick is up, and it is good. So Maryland, on an 80-yard touchdown drive, has closed the gap. 3.07 to play in the first half, and Penn State's lead has been cut to three at 13 to 10. And, and Maryland has, has shown us the ability to continually to come back. Atkinson to kick. Ra uh, Kenny Jackson and foul back deep. It'll be foul. Left side at the six. Looks for a block of the 15 outside 20. 25 and knocked out of bounds in the 30-yard line. Almost open up for Kevin without. Gets it out to the 30. Alan Sandler made the tackle along with Howard Eubanks. And now, with three minutes exactly to play in the first half, Penn State will try to get on the board once again. And George, regardless of what happens the rest of this half, that's a big touchdown for Maryland. It sure was, and uh, I was impressed the way they, they continue to come back. Uh, Penn State deep. Uh, Maryland has Penn State extremely well scouted. In the eye, Joe Coles and Skeeter Nichols are the backs. First down and 10. Penn State at their own 30-yard line. Delay draw. Nichols tries to get outside, slips, and does not get far. Maybe a half a yard gain. It'll be second down and just about 10 yards to go. You know, Penn State has only run that stream once, and they got a big play out of it. Maryland is coming tough. I, I, I think it could work again. I don't know why people get away from some of the things that work. Are you surprised that Coach Paterno has switched his backfield tandems after the last backfield tandem got him into the end zone? No, not at all. I think he's thinking of the second half, especially the fourth quarter. He wants to keep fresh people in there. Slot right. Blackledge to throw. Looking over the middle. It is caught by Kevin Bow. Breaks a tackle and gets across the 45 to the 46-yard line. It is a gain of 16 yards and a first down. And that's the first ball Todd Blackledge has thrown with authority. Bow will be coming from the bottom of your screen, kind of going left, right to left. And that ball had authority on it. And boy, is he a dangerous little bugger when he gets out in open field. Good job by Ron Heller, the short tackle on pass protection. First down and 10, Penn State split back to their own 46. Here's the give inside. Hit at the 46 is Nichols, perhaps to the 47, a gain of one, and Frank Kalenchik made the tackle. Well, also showed, Mark Duda. Excuse me, Stan. Skeeter showed a little inexperience then. He could have got himself three, maybe five, but he's anxious to get outside and make a big run. Penn State has called for a timeout. We are now down to a minute and 53. Penn State started this drive in the 30. They want to get close for at least a field goal to expand their lead. You're so right. Three points at this particular time would be would make Joe very, very happy. Give him a little bit of a cushion. We told you at the top of the show, Penn State in this series is 25 and one, and they have won 18 games in a row. I'm sure Bobby Ross is not necessarily concerned with past history, taking over for Jerry Claiborne this year. They certainly have a much more wide open offense. Down this way, right out, cool off a little bit. 153 to play. Somebody move. Got some balloons over the side of the stadium. I don't know. That may be uh, Rutgers scouts for all we know. I wonder who blew them up. I mean, that must have been a big guy. Probably it was you and I. Why don't we tell them the truth? And we did it in a half hour, too. And we weren't out of breath. Second down. And nine yards to go for the Nittany Lions at their own 47-yard line. Warner back in there. This time he is teamed with Cole. Jackson slotted to the left. Garrity wide to the left. And Blackledge will throw. Here's the screen. Warner looks for a block. Does not get it. Out in front. Attempting to make the block on the play for Penn State. Could not get it done, and Eric Wilson made the tackle. Third down. And nine. Blackledge again looking. A little short pass, and it's intercepted by Maryland. 50 in the 49-yard line. Joe Wilkins off the tip. Makes the interception. And Maryland will have a chance to get on the board. It went off the hands of Joel Coles, right into the hands of Joe Wilkins. 
the senior linebacker, and Maryland sets up shop with 121 to can't play. Fall, can't fall tight on that. The ball was there. There's a tip. There's the tip. Drill Wilkins gets it. But the Maryland's defenders are roughing up Penn State's receivers coming off the ball. They're going to have to use some different releases. So here's Maryland with 121 to play, trailing by three points. At the Penn State 49-yard line, and Bobby Ross looks on. First down and 10 yards to go. Esiason, delayed draw, in trouble. Joyner gets away and gets back near the line of scrimmage. He'll still lose one, but he could have lost five. Greg Gattuso finally brought him down, but a good bit of running by Willie Joyner as the Terrapins call time. Talk about Penn State moving in for a field goal, perhaps to up their lead. Maryland comes back with a tie going in at halftime on the road in their opener. It'll be serious trouble. We should have a very interesting second half. Uh, I think Joe Paterno was going to be complaining about a few of the, uh, Maryland's offensive linemen blocking from behind on, pa on pass rush. Joe Paterno has done a great deal of substituting in this game, not only with his backfield people, but with his wide receivers and his offensive line in the last series, for example. Dave Lau was in the ball game, along with some other people on the offensive mm -hmm. line. So uh, recognizing uh, how hot it is out there, he's substituting freely, and Willie Joyner is taking a well-deserved rest on the sidelines. He has really done yeoman work along with Esaias and really has been the big shaker and mover in the offense. Vernon Carter takes his place on second down and 11. Blitzes on, Esaias and it is hit and drop. Lost lightly. the ball. And the ball is loose and is recovered by Penn State. Joe Hines with a football, Kelly made the hit and Penn State gets it back again. Once again, I have to emphasize humidity because again, he dropped the ball. So Penn State. On the changeover of turnover. Right, he gets a heavy rush. He tries to evade the rush, and the ball comes out of his hand. Now we had Esiason lose two. Coles dropped one out of his hands. It's very, very humid out there. You have to watch those fakes because it's slipping out of there. He was not hit. Slipped out. Kelly fell on top of him, so he couldn't get the ball. And Hines comes up with a recovery. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State at the 38-yard line of Maryland. Black lets the throw, looking, firing, it is incomplete. Garrity almost came down with it, and likewise, it was almost intercepted. McFadden and Hoffman on the play. Stan Kevin Bow at the bottom of the screen was so wide open, they practically ignored him, and I hope somebody gets it down to the Penn State people. Uh, Todd was determined to get the ball of Garrity. He was double covered, and Kevin Bow was wide open. Maybe they'll come right back to it. We'll see. Garrity and Bow come to the bottom of your screen. Warner and Williams are the split backs. Second and ten. Blackledge again to throw. Looks to the sideline. It is caught at the 24-yard line. What a catch by Greg Garrity. And, and, they, and Penn State's fortune. That's a broken pass play. Both receivers, you'll see this. This is a great catch, folks. But Kevin Bow and Gary are in the same position. The ball has a lot of zip on it, but watch this catch by Garrity. Turns his back completely around, keeps his feet in, makes the first down. Humidity apparently does not bother Mr. Garrity because he caught that ball on the back half of the ball. Gain of 14, first down and 10, Penn State at the 24. 53 seconds to play in the half. Inside Warner, looking for us. Hole gets a slight one, gets a couple down to the 22-yard line. Call it a gain of two, make it second and eight. Corvino makes the tackle. Corvino's giving him fits up inside. Quick huddle, quick call. Second and eight. Blackledge looking in the end zone. He's got a man open in there, and it is caught for a touchdown! Kenny Jackson with a reception. He was the man who was open. Well, Stan, you got an example. If you put the ball to the inside where the receiver can use his body to protect himself and make the catch, we will see this. Now, this is a great throw. He wants to get it to Jackson, but watch Jackson use his body, turns to the inside, 
blocking the defender off and makes the touchdown. Hoffman was on the coverage, and in the pregame scouting report, Penn State felt that there was one back to pick on. Hoffman was the guy. Manka to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. So, after Penn State recovers the fumble by Esaias, and they take advantage, marching 38 yards for the touchdown, Garrity making a couple of important plays, and Penn State has gone out to a 20 to 10 lead, and George on the touchdown pass itself. Jackson was actually open much earlier. Blackledge was late getting him the ball. Well, Todd does that sometimes. He always wants to see the, the person so wide open that nobody can uh, take a shot of knocking it down. Decided to go with him. Jackson used his body properly and made the touchdown. But Penn State's pass routes have not been sharp so far. I think they'll do a lot better in the second half. 22-yard touchdown pass. Todd Blackledge to Kenny Jackson. That is Blackledge's second touchdown pass of the game. The first one went to Kurt Warner, good for 11 yards. So Blackledge now with six. There's a future catcher. Massimo Manca, the freshman who has been letter perfect in the game and a half we've played thus far. Penn State on top, 20 to 10, 30 seconds to play in the first half. George, would you squib this one to prevent a return? No, I think they'll kick as they have been kicking. And most of, these, of his kicks have been squibs anyhow, but they've been a little deeper. Uh, they wouldn't want to give a chance of Maryland to go in and get three points. So Manka is six for six on extra points, three for three, and he does squib it. Coach Saverin does it again. You one up on it. Picked up and carried out to the 30-31 yard line. Returning the ball is Tim Whitty, who is a third team fullback. So Whitty brings it out across the 30, near the 31, and they will have 25 seconds with which to move the football as we near the end of the first half. Let's see how Maryland plays it here. 25 seconds, not a great deal of time, but Esiason is going to throw. Fires, it is tipped and knocked away, and I think that it was Joe Hines. And Joe Hines is having himself a great football game. Because your audio cable was wrapped in. Joe Hines tips the ball away. He's had a sack. Flush people out of the pocket, 6-2, out of Cleveland, Ohio. There's the Rutgers scouts. Tough way to scout a a ball game. It may be a lot easier than traveling up Route 22, though. That's the way you want to get here. Esiason back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. He fires, and it is caught on a double tip. Out to the 49-yard line. Russell Davis caught the deflection. Al Harris makes the tackle. It'll stop the clock on the first down. 11 seconds to play in the first half. Now it rolls. 10 seconds. 9 seconds. 8. Esiason back to throw. He fires out of the flash. Nash to the 45, the 40, and inside the 40 to the 38. But the time in the first half has run out. That's the end of the first half. The score, Penn State 20, Maryland 10. We'll be back right after this. We get the ball, too, don't we? Yeah. Getting set for the second half kickoff. Atkinson will kick off for Maryland. Penn State receiving. Lions moving left to right here in the third quarter. Again, there is very little wind here today. Has not been a factor in the ball game. 
The weather has been, however, because of the high humidity, we have seen several times when people have just dropped the football. Back deep for Penn State to receive, Kevin Bow and Tony Mumford. Penn State leads it 20 to 10. Atkinson kick is high. Coming three yards deep in the end zone to Bow. To the 10, to the 15, and out to the 20 and across the 20 to the 21. Good coverage by the Maryland Special League team. And the Nittany Lions will take over from there. First and 10 on their own 21. Jim Joyce making the tackle for the Maryland Terrapins, who have played a strong first half. Actually, Stan, it's been a defensive game in spite of the amount of points been up there. All the points have been scored as a result of turnovers. Across the front line for Penn State, Ron Heller, Pete Sparrows, Mark Battaglia, Nick McGinnis, Bill Kuntz, Garrity, Jackson, the receivers, Warner and Williams, Todd Black, Ledger, of course, the quarterback. Williams, left tackle for a yard out to the 22-yard line. The first half statistics, very close. As a matter of fact, in some areas, Maryland had edges, such as in first downs, rushes, yardage game in running, and overall. There's that wide tackle, six with Gross and Duda, Kalenchik, Corvino, Brown, and Olisi. Now, some of those guys will drop in and out of the line of scrimmage. The rest of the linebackers and defensive backs. Second down and nine, Penn State. Garrity left, Jackson right. Split backs as Blackledge throws. Over the middle, McCloskey's got it at the 27-yard line, but runs back to the 26-yard line. Well, the gain will be just four, and it'll bring up third down and five yards to go. McCloskey's second catch of the day. Joe Wilkins makes the tackle. Well, he's open, and you have to get the ball to the man that's open. He'll break one of these. Straight drop back. It's a quickie to the tight end. The linebacker, 53, Muller plugs. Nobody there. Should have gone a little deeper with his route. He had it out to the 29, but came back trying to pick up the first down, so now it is third down and five slot to the right. Out of the eye of the post set. The late draw to Williams. He's got it to the 30 and out near the 31-yard line but I believe he may be a bit shy of that first down. Frank Kolenchik made the tackle, cut his legs out from underneath. It is a gain of about four and a half, and they're probably going to call for the measurement. Yes, indeed, they are. He, from up here, it looks about a foot short, but you can never can tell from this uh, view. They bring in the chains. And take a look at Todd Blackledge and Joe Wilkins of Maryland talking it over. They stretch the chain. And it's a first down. By the tip of the football. Maybe they use the metric system. But Williams did a good job of keeping his head down and going for that first down. Knew where he had to go for the first down. Got it, and Penn State picks up the initial first down of the second half. And they have the ball at their own 31-yard line. This time they line of the eye. Receiver split either side. Blackledge. Looking and firing deep, and Jackson is wide open, and it's intercepted. Lendl Jones with the football. The 35, it'll take it out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Uh, Mike McCloskey chased him out of bounds, and there's a Penn State player down back up field at the 45. Jackson was open, but Blackledge underthrew him, and Lendl Jones picked it off, and it is Kurt Warner, the player who's down. Well, he had him open. The ball is poorly thrown. It just hangs there. Hangs there. Kenny was way out in the open. Has to turn around. Jones makes the interception, and there's a flag on a play. Now, uh, Jones runs it to the far sidelines, and is tackled out of bounds. And that's Kurt Warner down. As we watch the replay, Warner was blocking on one of the defensive tackles, and I think the guy just fell on top of him. It would appear at this point, just the wind knocked out of him. He appears to be all right. Now, they're bringing the play back upfield. Well, this might, this is the penalty. Stan, this is the penalty tacked on uh, to the interception. That's why the ball's up to midfield. All right, they did not bring it back. They moved it forward. So the interception by Lendell Jones, plus the 15, moves the ball out to the 49-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go Maryland. They trail by 10. Slot to the left. Fake and... Esiason rolls, he's looking, man wide open, Davis, touchdown, Maryland! 
Russell Davis wide open and a 51-yard touchdown pass from Boomer Esiason to Russell Davis. Watch this. This is a beautiful play. A little fake of a counter with a rollout action. Throws the Penn State secondary. Here's Davis coming across on a post. Wide open, perfectly thrown football. Six points, and Maryland is certainly back in this game. Let's watch it from a different angle. You see the fake of the crossing action? Esiason picks him up. Shows he's got a great arm. Hits him on a dead run for a touchdown. Not much difference than the play on which they called pass interference on Harry Hamilton. Atkinson with a kick. It is up, and it is good. We have got ourselves a football game. There's a timeout on the action. The score, Penn State 20, Maryland 17. We'll be back right after this. Dan, we had two plays there. Blackledge could not get the ball to Jackson for a possible touchdown. He's into seven, and they turn around, and bing, they get seven. It seemed like Penn State had taken the advantage scoring late in the first half to go on top, pointed at 10. But with the turnover, Maryland strikes quickly, and they're right back in the football game. There is Russell Davis, the man who scored the touchdown. Atkinson. Kicking off to Bow at the goal line. He'll come out of there to the 10, the 20, 25, and out across the 25 near the 27-yard line. Tim Willike makes the tackle on Kevin Bow, and Penn State will start from their own 27-yard line. Interestingly enough, George, every touchdown in this game, with the exception of one, has come after a turnover, and even on Maryland's touchdown drive, came in a 40-yard pass interference penalty. And it really has turned out to be, as we predicted, a passing duel. Uh, this is going to be a dog fight. First down and 10, Penn State, their own 27-yard line. Pitch to Warner. Not much room. Manages to get three, maybe four on his own effort. And a little bit of pushing and shoving between Wilkins and Kurt Warner on the sideline. Valenchik was in on the tackle. Wilkins over there to had some conversation. It's a gain of four. And if I know Joe Paterno, he's going to try to get some first downs on the ground, settle his team down, and get back into the, beating them in the trenches and hope to break them by the fourth quarter. Second down, a long five yards to go. Garrity split wide right. Jackson on the short side of the field split left. Second and a long five. Jonathan Williams. Hole closed very quickly. Stopped for a one yard gain. Kolenchik, along with Wilkins, and those two are playing a strong defensive game. It is a gain of one. It'll bring up third down and four yards to go. Kolenchik pinched in from his defensive, they call guard position, lined up over the offensive guard, pinched in, beat the, uh, the blocker, the offensive guard, McGinnis, and there's no place for Williams to go. Heller, Spiros, Battaglia, McGinnis, and Kant along the front line, along with McCloskey. At the top of your screen is the tight end. Third down and four in a big play. Blackledge looking, throwing, caught by Gary at the 48-yard line. First down, Penn State. And that is a big, big third down conversion. But there's a flag on the play up at the 47-yard line. I will. We'll take the play. We'll take the play. Sounds like an illegal chuck. First down. Legal contact downfield. Penn State, of course, declines the penalty. They take the play, which gets that first down up near the 49-yard line. And Garrity having a good ball game this afternoon. He's an excellent receiver. He's very sure-handed. You know, you get the ball anywhere around him, he's going to make the reception. 5'11", 170, a senior from Brantford Woods. Rocky Washington in the game, split left. High backfield, first down and 10, Penn State. Play. Blackledge throwing incomplete. And again, there was contact downfield on Kevin Bow, but no call that's going to be made. Well, J.D. Gross was no. one of the men on the coverage, as was Bill McFadden, but no call incomplete. I had made a comment in the first half, Stan, that the... Maryland defenders have been awfully rough on the Penn State receivers coming downfield. I wouldn't be surprised to get a few more calls against Maryland. I didn't know Abe Gibbon coached for Maryland. That's 
not A. That's Joe Paterno there. Second down and 10 yards to go. The Nittany Lions at their own 49-yard line. Foul is wide left. Again, the eye. Rush on screen. Warner to the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 30. Eight-yard line, first down, Penn State. Well, that's way, one way you're stopping a rush. They've run that play three times for an average of about 17 yards. Let's watch it. Now, Todd does a great job of faking this. Looks upfield, then dumps the ball off to Kurt Warner, neutralizes the rush, gets a great block again from Spiros, 56 out in front, makes a big first down. Guinness and Battaglia also out front. And there's a big pickup for Penn State. They have the football just inside the Maryland 38. 10.53 to play third quarter. Penn State leads it by three. Warner again slips and falls down after gaining a yard to the 37-yard line. And we have seen Penn State backs do that continually. And it is a dry day and it really hasn't rained here. Well, he's trying to make a cutback and he, there was a big hole there and he just lost his footing. And another Penn State player is down near the line of scrimmage. It looks like Maryland might be in a five-man front right now, but what they do, they overshift that wide tackle six where one, one of the men on the guards gets over the center's nose, you get an odd look, and then one of the linebackers will show, as we call it, Oklahoma on one side. Pete Spiros, the man who is down, and they are working. It looks like either on his ankle or his knee. You see the pain on Pete's face. I Pete, of course. It's not his knee. Right. He's a senior. 6'2", 248 from Potomac, Maryland. So well, that's an area Penn State cannot afford to lose experience in the offensive line. Directly behind him is Jeff Woofter, sophomore guard. Of course, you also have Dave Lau, who's a senior. Luke Bartek has played some in this game. Looks like the knee, George. They've got the pads rolled up. Todd Blackledge will take time to go over and talk to the offensive coaches while they're working on Pete Sparrows. He's up, but he's limping badly on that left knee. But he's walking off under his own power. It couldn't be too serious. They would not let him put pressure right. on that, that knee if it was serious. He might have an, an extension. Maybe the ankle because the shoe's off. And it could be the ankle, as you said originally. Well, he's walking all right, so. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him back in the game. I don't know what they're passing, but save one. That's the line in there, eating. Peanuts. Second out of nine, Penn State at the Maryland 37 yard line. Bartek is in there to take Sparrows' place. Williams. Gets outside, 30. Oh, tried to make the cut inside and just stepped out of bounds. Very close to the first down marker. I believe will be a bit shy with one step away from breaking it. But Williams makes a great cut to the outside. He, the play was designed to go inside. That time, Maryland pinched again to the inside, and he reads it. Let's watch him take the cut to the outside. And on sheer speed, turns the corner. Unfortunately, his right foot stepped on the sidelines, and he's out of bounds. <laughs> Third down and one yard to go. Penn State driving. Started this drive on their 30. They're going to call for a measurement here. Well, I think this is a situation where, if I was Joe Paterno, whether he makes it on this play or not, I would go for it again. Uh, because you get three, if he gets the field goal, he's only up by six. He could beat by a touchdown, and it also would neutralize some of his momentum. And I think it's imperative that they make the first down. Absolutely. And again, you're not talking about a chip shot. You're talking about a 45-yarder should they have to attempt it from here. It is third down. It is about a foot short. Let's see what they call. And let's see what kind of formation if they come out of that power eye, which they sometimes do on short yardage. Straight eye. Williams and Warner on third down and a foot at the Maryland 28-yard line. Warner dies of a right guard, and I believe he's got it. Well, they went to two tight end formation. Uh, Maryland Bliss, a corner caught it out of the Warner caught it out of his left eye, made a cut up the middle, made the first down. 
They're going to call for the sticks just to make sure. Unless he got a bad placement, I can't see how that could not be a first down. Well, on the near side marker, which is not the official one, he clearly has it. It is yeah. the far side hash mark. They'll come into your picture at any moment. They are at the Penn State bench. Here's the measurement. He did not make it. I think I'm going to get my uh, glasses because from here it looked like a sure thing. All right, they're going to go for They're going to go for it as right. They'll load up up front. Well, so, they got a big quarterback at 6'5", 217. I think it'd be wise if he, they try to sneak it. They only need a matter of maybe an inch, two inches. This time they will line up out of that power eye. Blackwood's calling for quiet. I disagree. I don't like quarterback sneaks. Let's see what they do. Quarterback sneak and they get a first down. We're even. We're even. I didn't say they wouldn't do it. I don't care for them. You don't like to get into a situation where you have to use it, right? I would let's let's elaborate on that a, a bit, George. There is a theory, one that I obviously subscribe to, that regardless of Blackledge's size or any quarterback size, that he has no momentum going toward the line of scrimmage, whereas a fullback would. Well, true, but if the offensive lineman makes any kind of a takeoff and the but the boy is big enough, sometimes his own strength will get an inch or so. That was a short yardage situation. First and ten at the Maryland 26-yard line after the sneak by Blackledge. Warner got a hole. Gets down to the 21-yard line, and he made a nice run, a five-yard gain. Looked like if he could have gotten that side, he would have had more room, but a five-yard gain nonetheless. But it was a great run. It was a draw play to the outside linebacker, read it, came to fill the hole. He gave, gave him one of those quick outside cuts and made a good run out of it. By the way, Warner in the first half had 31 yards, rushing, 26 receiving, one of those for a touchdown. Kenny Jackson wide to the right now, 43 yards total for Warner at 49 last week. Warner again, up the middle, down to the 17 yard line. It's a gain of three, it'll be third down and about one and a half for the first down. Kalenchik and Eubanks making the tackle for Maryland. So again, it is third down and I short. I watched the cut, good takeoff, false key by the right guard here. He cuts it back up the middle where the weakness is in the defense. And this is what Joe Paterno likes to see. He knows the team's in a dog fight. Here's where character is built. And Lou Bartek, who came in for Spiro, was the man leading the play. Battaglia comes out over the ball at center. In the eye, now to the power eye. Coles, the up man of that power eye, third and one. Warner hit at the line of scrimmage and driven back. He'll be very close. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Eric Wilson, number 55, really stuck him. And McFadden came in to clean up. Now they had to get just to the near the 16-yard line. They'll have to call him the sticks once again. Once again, it's the, it's the judgment call on forward motion. It looked like his forward motion had it, and then he got knocked back. On a tough decision. It's going to be about two inches short. So now George can go for it again. Well, it worked before, and I would come back with the same play. They made, they needed two inches, and they got a yard last time. But let's see what happens. Well, here they all come. Mumford comes in as Warner goes out. 8-12 to play in the third quarter. Penn State leads it by three. Fourth down an inches. The second such conversion attempt on this drive. Power eye. Mumford is a deep man. Blackledge sneaks. He's got it. Blackwood sneaks for one to the 15 and a first down. Well, Stan, what they're doing, they're just taking the two guards in the center and wedging them and allowing Todd to use his own strength. See the surge in line? By the way, their offensive line is doing much better in this drive. And Battaglia did a good job because what he wanted to do there was to stand the man up so he couldn't penetrate. Good job by Mark Battaglia. Mark's a senior, 6'2", 225 from Upper St. Clair in Pittsburgh. So. The first down again. Now the, the second, time, fourth down. Now's the time. Uh, a good play action pass. Uh, you know, good work. It gets tough when you get around. In close like that. The flag and the 25 second clock ran out. What a you bet. Delay of game. And that is, there's never a good time for it. But there are times that are worse than others, and that was one of them. I'd like to say there's no excuse for it, but apparently something happened. 
uh, maybe the quarterback and trying to uh, rally his team, getting him through, took a few seconds and forgot about it and come out and uh, the, the clock ran out. Plus, George, you've got different personnel in there in your goal line offense, so they had to get people out and get people in, but those are the kind of mistakes you do not want to make. So now it is first and 15. Sometimes they the work, work in your favor because now they will throw the ball. Play fake. Blackledge is hit, spins away, flag down, incomplete. Intended for Kenny Jackson at the four yard line. Pass was low, but a flag was down. Ernest yeah, Brown and Mike Clarvino well, put the rush play. on, but you've got to believe it's holding on Penn State. When it's thrown deep in the backfield like that, it's usually hit. Chapman or Red. Chapman or Red. Let's see if they take it. The legal use of their hands. This is if you take your penalty, this could be second, this could be first and 15. If you take your play, you lost 35. You want to decline it and take the play, right? Well, you it's get only a five-yard yard penalty. Uh, and I think they're going to decline it because the official really did not explain it properly. He had me confused for a minute. Certainly, if they decline the penalty, it would be second and 15. If they take the penalty, it would be first and 20. Somebody, which wouldn't make much of a difference no. down deep in their own territory like that because, you know, the state's going to have to put the ball in the air. As but a matter again, of fact, you would give them more room might to be operate. Favorable because they get more room to run deep patterns. Well, they are going to take the penalty. Well, I hope we score a touchdown on them just for that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, sometimes the best way to interpret that is to divide the yardage you have by the down jab left to get it in. Good. And quite obviously, you'd rather... But, uh, really, in, in a situation where Penn State's got receivers open all over the place, uh, it's strange. First and 20. Blacklist to throw. Got time over the middle and is caught down at the 18-yard line to Tony Mumford. The game will pick up seven yards, but that's a nice chunk out of that 20. That's Mike Muller made the tackle, but it's a gain of seven. It'll bring up second down and 13 yards to go for the first time. Once again, they, they have not gotten the ball to their tight end as much as I think they could have. You might see some play action with the tight end dragging across the field. Garrity right, Jackson to the left. Here's an option, Blackwood keep. 15 and down near the 10 yard line. Now that's a good call. They don't run that play too often. They like to run it when they get into their opposing ter uh, team territory because the people are not looking for table, it. And he's table. a big kid, and if he turns up field, he's good. Watch the table. He can usually make five. And the inside linebackers, Muller and Wilson, are the ones who had to shift outside to make the tackle. Now, the third and six for the first down. Todd Blackwood wants to call a timeout to decide on this important third down play. There's a timeout in the action. The score. Penn State 20, Maryland 17. We'll be back right after this. You can see that Penn State has been involved in this drive for an awfully long time. However, what Maryland's one possession of the third quarter was one play, 51-yard touchdown pass. And the defense has been on the field for an awfully long time. Here's a key play in the game. Third down and six. Blitz on. Blackwood throws over the middle. It is caught. That's a three-yard line. But it was interference anyhow, uh, Stan. That was McCloskey. I'd like to pat myself on the back to think that they finally got him the ball. But and Blackledge is down back at the 25-yard line. He was hit after he threw the football and was really leveled by Corvino and Brown. The reception will stand to McCloskey at the two. That is good for a first down and first and goal. Well, I, I think he's got the wind knocked out of him. Let's take a look at it. This time, watch the... The rush you get the helmet. That's uh, Brown get his helmet right in his gut. But we missed. Oh, what a great catch by McCloskey because he was interfered with as he caught the ball. I thought they might come back with the screen on the third and six, but got McCloskey, as you said, George, all day. He's been open. And he hit him down to the one yard line. It'll be first and goal. But of course, the major concern at this point is Todd Blacklett down. And now here comes Strang. Not that he's not capable, but boy. That center quarterback exchange right. on the one-yard line. Right. Especially on a day like today. But to get back to McCloskey, people don't realize he's close to six foot seven. If you take a, a, a man of that size and just run him down seven, eight yards downfield, you know, let him stretch out there, put the ball in there, stuck the defending it. 
There's a timeout on the action. The score, Penn State 20, Maryland 17. We'll be back right after this. I do believe Todd's okay. I, as I say, I haven't taken a few helmets in my belly myself. I'll tell you what, I would waste the time out and keep him in there. A good thought. I was just thinking about myself. It just, it's happened a million times during the season. I would bring a new, a new quarterback in and hit a goal line and pop out goes the ball. Todd Blackledge is all right. He'll sit out one play. Strang is the quarterback. First and goal at the one yard line. You want to make sure the center snap. Mumford in motion. Quarterback sneak. No, sir. No game. Well, I think that was just a, a killer play do. because here comes Blackley. Sure. Let me ask the... you something, George, now after the fact. Would you have wasted the time out to keep Blackwood in the game? Yes, I would have. Uh, but, you know, you know, to reach his own, you can't. You know, hindsight's great. But, Maybe they weren't sure what his mind, his mental state was. Was he a little foggy until they got him over on the sideline? So he's back in, and he, and he actually Strang made about a half yard. No harm whatsoever. They do gain a half yard. It'll be second down and goal. Mumford is the tailback. Out of the power eye. Cole's the up man. Motion Williams near side. Here's to get the Mumford. Hit in the backfield and stop for a loss by Mike Corvino. What a great defensive play. Well, somebody had to miss a block. He come in through clean. He just shot the gap. I don't like this formation. Now, let's watch Corvino come in. They pulled Spiris number 56, and he just beat him, beat him across the line of scrimmage and made the tackle. Somebody has to seal him off. Probably one of the faking backs to not pick him up. Now you've got a tough play to call because it is third down and goal. Well, the ball just inside the four. Bootleg action or some rollout action with a little pass off it where the quarterback has an option to keep it. Blackledge to throw. Look Looking him. in the end zone. No. McCloskey was just, or rather not McCloskey, Kirk Bowman just over the end line. A foot beyond the end line and that brings up fourth down and this time we'll see the field goal unit. Well, if we can see this again, he just waited a little too long. A fraction of a second, because Kirk Bowman came across the field, and he was wide open. That drive was nearly 10 minutes long. Penn State apparently will have to settle for the 26-yard field goal attempt by Massimo Manca. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. So the 26-yard field goal gives Penn State a six-point lead. It is the third field goal of the day for Massimo Manca. George, it's got to be slightly disappointing when you drive that far for that long and only get three. I'm taking a guess here, Stan. I think, I can't see how they can pull that guard on that from the front side when they're in a goal line defense, unless somebody's going to seal them off. Because that time he just shot the gap and brought the ball carry. Now, one of the faking backs didn't pick him up, I don't know. Well, the drive started on Penn State's 30 yard line. It concludes in a 70, a 66 yard drive that took 10 minutes and 30 seconds, just about 10 minutes and 27 seconds. Well, that's the best drive actually they've had, but they still they've only come up with three points. Well, Maryland within a touchdown have played Penn State very tough. There are a lot of people who thought it would be a tough game. But most felt that Penn State would be able to wear down Maryland in the second half. Thus far, hasn't happened, although the Penn State defense has rested this entire quarter. Maryland has been out there the entire quarter. 425 to play in the third. Penn State 23, Maryland 17. Monka's kick comes to Quander too deep, and he'll go out to the 15. He's hit hard. He gets away and finally gets back to the 20-yard line. Quander returns at 22, just past the 20-yard line. And Maryland will set up shop, trailing by six. First down and 10 yards to go at their own 20-yard line. 419 to play third quarter. 
Now, one thing about it, they were resting Joyner before. He certainly has had a long rest. Esiason, 10 out of 20. One touchdown, one interception. First down, 10 yards to go. Penn State defensive line shift. Short drop, pass in the flat. Davis has got it to 35, and he steps out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Alley-oop of sorts, and Davis came down with it. Well, that's a great catch. Actually, that's a design play, Stan, what he did. He, he fakes the quick out. Now watch Davis get up just behind the, the undercover in front of the safety coming over. That's a well-thrown ball. In the past in this game, of course, they threw that quick out, so Roger Jackson was coming up, but this time they threw it over. First down and 10. Maryland at their own 39. Here's the gift to Joyner. Sweep to the right. Gets a nice block from Nash. The 45 and across the 45 near the 48-yard line. Nice block by John Nash, the fullback. A gain of nine. It'll be second down and a little less than a yard to go. No inside linebacker pursuit. It's Howard Eubanks, who has played a strong defensive game. And despite the fact Penn State has scored 23 points, Maryland has played a good defensive football game. Slot left, high backs, second and less than a yard. Esiason to throw over the middle. Davis opens it over throw. Russell Davis again split the coverage between Biondi and Robinson, but the ball was overthrown. Well, Davis wasn't looking for the ball, Stan. I, I, I don't think he thought he was the primary receiver. He was open between the double coverage, and uh, Isaiason saw him and let it go, but he wasn't looking for the football. If I just caught a 51-yard touchdown pass, I would assume I was the primary receiver. Into the game comes Ron Fazio replacing Russell Davis. It'll be third ball, down and less than a yard. They wasted it down on that. They still got third and one. Out of the pro set this time. Here's the gift to Nash, and he's got the first down at midfield. First down, Maryland. Two-yard game by Nash. Radisic making the tackle for Penn State. Maryland has moved the football. I hope the Nittany line didn't have a big run. Or the people below them are in a lot of trouble. This is a fourth quarter ball game. Uh, but Penn State's linebackers are uh, not really taking over. Motion near side with Davis. Here's Joyner. Into the backfield and drop for a loss. Nice play. Walker Lee Ashley. Loss of two. It'll be second and 12. Walker Lee Ashley, last week's player of the game beat his man across the line of scrimmage and made the penetration and the tackle. And a flag. Well, that, yeah, they'll take the penalty. This is a 15, a 10, a 10 yard penalty. Holding is the call, 10 yards. That'll bring up first down and 20. So there he had first and 20 or second and 12. They took the first and 20. Penn State will line up defensively. Don't be surprised if they don't come back to that same play that they hit Davis before, maybe on the other side of the field. But it was wide open, and there he is. He's lined up to the right, to the top of the... Blitz on, pass is batted up in the air, and incomplete. The blitz was on, they were coming. But he was the man that we're going to try to get the football to. Incomplete. That'll bring up second down. And up by Ashley got his hand on it. Got his hands up in the air. Second and 20. No question that it would be a very big turn of events if Penn State is able to stop Maryland on this drive. Second and 20. And Esiason will back out of there come to the sideline and talk to Bobby Ross. That is the first time out that they have used. 2.28 to play in the third quarter. Penn State leading 23-17. George, we talked before the ball game. You thought because of Maryland's size and strength they would give Penn State a good ball game. 
you felt that, however, Penn State would begin to wear them down. Are we at that point when Penn State gets the ball back? Well, just about. Uh, I felt that Penn State defense would come on very strong in this series because of what I said before. Plus, they had a nice rest when the offense controlled the ball for 10 minutes. And this is why this series uh, is so pivotal. If Maryland can continue to move the ball, then Penn State really is in trouble in the fourth quarter. If Penn State stops them here, forces them to kick, and their offense will start to move the ball, then I think it's possible by the middle of the fourth quarter they'll start dominating the game. Crucial series in the holding penalty against Maryland really set them back to a point now where they are second down and 20 yards to go. And also something to consider, if they stop him on this series, their field position will obviously improve. I wanted to mention as you take a look at the crowd there, the, the crowd today, well over 84,000, the exact count, 84,597, the third largest crowd ever in Beaver Stadium history. Large ever to watch Maryland play, second and 20. Here's the blitz. Hamilton misses him. The throw. Davis has got it wide open, and he's gone for a touchdown. Forget it. He's gone. Well, that's just, as I say, you can't reach. Uh, I would say that that is a turn of events as far as breaks for Maryland. They had the quarterback, Isaiason, for a big loss, but he's a big man. He ducked underneath. Watch. Hamilton's got him cold. They put him on a blitz. He reaches for you. Don't jump. He ducks underneath. Davis runs a pattern on a post, and he's dead. All the way, and now Penn State's in trouble. You wonder about the pass interference call, if that was indeed the same assignment, because Hamilton committed on the pass interference. This time, however, he blitzed, and I guess they left Mark Robinson all alone. Well, he had a one-on-one, -on -one, and then Robinson let Davis beat him to the inside on a post pattern. It almost looked like Robinson throws, thinking, thinking that the, the quarterback was going to be sacked. Kick is good, and for the first time in the ball game, Maryland has gone on top. 2-17 to play in the third quarter. Maryland 24, and Penn State 23. Atkinson approaches. Kick is long, and it is high. Bow, four yards deep, will come out of there. Got the wedge, the 10. 15, 20, and out to the 22-yard line. So Kevin Bauer returns at 26 yards, tackled by Bob Kunderman. And the Nittany Lions, for the first time in this game, and for the first time this season, must come from behind. And this is when you, a, a, a team molds itself together. This is when it, it tempers itself. You're behind, it's a hot day, going into the fourth quarter soon. You gotta keep the ball, you gotta get some points on the board. Nick Hayden in the ball game as the offensive center. Laub is in at guard. A second string line, as it were. First down and 10 yards to go. Wing to the left. Pitch wide to Williams. Good block by Washington. Williams outside to the 30. And across the 30 to the 33. Nice game by Jonathan Williams, 11 yards and a first down, and a great block by Rocky Washington. Well, they ran that from their uh, double wing set. Williams is set back as the fullback. Uh, they pull a tackle, and Washington springs him. Dave Love, number 60, is out in front. That's a good first down play for Penn State after what has just happened. Now, comes right. There's Russell Davis. 156 yards receiving, five catches, two TDs. Blacklist throwing, almost intercepted. It was intended for Kevin Bow, and almost picked off by Maryland's Joe Alisi, one of the outside linebackers dropping off in coverage, and that could have been serious trouble. Well, that time he forced the ball, Alisi dropped back underneath, and he was in perfect position to intercept. His brother is a guard on the offensive unit. They are twins. Second down. Ten yards to go. 2.01 to play third quarter. Maryland leads by one. Blackledge to throw. Here's a screen out in the flat. Nice move made by Williams to the 40. And across the 40 to the 44. And very near a first down. Skeeter Nichols. Finally brought down by Eric Wilson and Bill McFadden. But not before. He picks up near the ten yards needed for the first down. I don't know why Kurt Warner is not in the ball game right now. The Penn State trying to do. Now they're just getting the ball to their skilled people as far out 
Cody can operate. Now that's just Williams on a one, oh, excuse me, Nichols. One on one, swing pattern, makes a nice run out of it. Well, he's got the entire second unit in there. The offensive line, Jerome Wilson, Dave Laub, Hayden is in there. So he's got the second unit with the exception of the wide receivers and Todd Blackman. And I'll tell you a lot, it takes a lot of guts for a coach to do this when he's just gone behind. We want to keep that first thing fresh, fresh for the fourth quarter. Again, with a wing to the left side. First down and 10, Penn State near the 44 yard line. Williams again, the sweep. He's got a lot of room, 50, 45 to the 40. He's gonna go, 30. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 23 yard line. That's great running, but again, Rocky Washington made the key block. He blocked above the waist on a track back. It's a pitch sweep for the fullback. The same play they opened up the series with. Here it is, the same play. Watch Rocky Washington make the key block coming from his striker position. Now, this is all Jonathan Williams spinning, turning, twisting, getting down in scoring position. What a run by Jonathan Williams. He has come to the four. Another angle. Looks like Jonathan against Notre Dame last year. Washington makes the key black. Cuts back, spins, turns, gets to the sideline. And also a good block by Dave Laub. You barely saw it in your replay. But now Penn State coming to the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Wants a timeout. Reducing them to just one left in the game. But that's a very smart call. The offensive team is moving. People are getting excited. You're in field goal range. You can win this game with a field goal, uh, with at least a field goal. You want to keep everybody calm down. Just say, look, we're on the move. No mistake. No mistake. And we repeat that this has been done, by and large, with a second unit. Give credit to the offensive linemen. Stan Short, Nick Hayden, Dave Lau, Jerome Wilson, tight end Kirk Bowman. This almost entirely has been a product of the second string offensive line, which is equally surprising. Lau with a great block on the last run by Williams. You're also running, in essence, with a second team back, with the exception of Williams. Number 75, Jerome Wilson, the right tackle, a sophomore. He's made about two or three great blocks. Again, as I said, it takes a lot of guts for a coach to do this. He wants to keep that first string fresh for the last fourth quarter. That sweep, that tackle must seal in that defensive guy, and he has done it on the two outstanding runs by Jonathan Williams. Well, the unit will stay intact. Garrity will come to the right. Williams, 50 yards rushing, averaging more than six per carry. Again, the slot to the right side. Fake to Williams. Blackman throwing man wide open, Washington, touchdown! Great catch, great call! That's Greg why they on him. Garrity wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, this is a great call. They fake Jonathan Williams up the middle. It's a great catch. The ball is thrown behind Garrity. He's on a quick post from his outside position, and he makes a stupendous catch. 23-yard touchdown pass. There it is again. Look at the catch Look by at that Garrity. Catch. That's the second or third great catch he's made today in key situations. Third touchdown pass of the game for Todd Blacklish. And his seventh of the young season. And Penn State, they may want to go for two here because that gives you the seven-point cushion. The one-point conversion only gives you the six points. They call timeout, and they are now out of them. You're exactly right, Stan. It's not going to help them just to be at 30 to 24, they're gonna go for two, here they come. I, again, I expect some type of a rollout action where the quarterback has a, the option to pass or run. So they use that last time out, and you would be in a position to hope that they will not need one late in the game. They don't have them. So Penn State will now line up and go for the two Try to get that seven point margin. Of course, with a whole quarter plus a minute and seven to play, you begin to wonder about two Maryland field goals beat you. Well, you know, Stan, both good defensive teams. We had a defensive ball game up to about the middle of the third quarter. But when you start putting the ball up in the air long enough and frequently enough, things start to happen. I'll send Garrity wide right, Jackson in the slot. They go for the deuce. Nichols and Williams in the backfield. Blackledge 
looking, throwing in the flat. Oh. Nichols falls down and he had it wide open. Nichols fell down as he received the pass, and believe me when I tell you, there was no one near him. He could have trotted in backwards into the end zone, so the two-point conversion failed. 107 to play in the third quarter. Penn State 29, Maryland 24. You know, Stan, a shorter pass, that is, that's a difficult pass. It's got to be thrown at the perfect angle, a little in front of the back, because he's coming out on a diagonal a route. He threw a little bit behind him. It caused him to turn the steep one out for money. Well, he had his back facing the goal line to catch the pass. At least you want him lateral, of course, so he can turn up field. So, uh, Maryland trailing by five, 107 to play in the third quarter. And the wind has now begun to kick up. It will be at Maryland's back for the time being, but in the fourth quarter, if it persists, it will be in their face. And the flags are blowing straight out. Massimo Manca, who has it on three of three, both field goals and extra points, will be kicking off with Tim Quander back deep. Well, Penn State comes right back with the touchdown. And you know, Penn State known for defense, and people knew they were going to be strong defensively this year. Had some doubts about offense, but these offensive people have done a super job. Now they've turned around and said to the defense, hey boys, we did our thing, now you got to hold. Monka's kick coming. The squander at the three, out to the 20, and out to the 21, and that's as far as he will go. Mark Robinson coming in there on the hit. Squander gets up. Harry Hamilton in on the tackle as well. So Maryland will be 80 yards away as they spot the ball right at the 20. The Penn State drive, 78 yards. The touchdown coming on a 23-yard pass from Todd Blackledge to Greg Garrity. Blackledge's third touchdown pass of the game. Maryland has the two timeouts remaining. You might not think of it now, but it could be a problem later on, without a doubt. One minute to play in the third quarter. Man in motion near side is Lewis. Here's the given side to Nash. There's a fumble on the play. Let's wait till they unpile. Let's wait till they unpile. And Maryland has retained possession. That's another new linebacker, Marciatano. Watch him come in. This is the old Penn State linebacker type of a hit. Well, we missed the, the tackle. It was a great tackle. Roger Puzz in there. Back to throw Esaias in second and 10. Out of the flat. It is Nash to the 25 and across the 25 and out near the 27-yard line. I It'll be a gain of nearly seven to bring up third down. Stan, there are a lot of rookies in there, and boy, are those pads popping now. Carmen Antonio again making the tackle. Let's, let's see if we can see Ashley here. I, but it's a good job by Hamilton. He turns it back in. Antonio is suing from his linebacker spot is there again. And we get word that Kurt Warner on the bench is uh, being iced in the rib cage area. We'll elaborate when we come back. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Penn State 29, Maryland 24. We'll be back right after this. Messiah's in the throw, rolling in the flat. It is incomplete, intended for tight end John Tice off his fingertips. Incomplete and a big play there. Well, Stan, this has been a game of breaks. One team gets them, the other team gets them. What happened? They came with an outside blitz. Mark Robinson was supposed to come up and play that tight end tight. He didn't. He was wide open. Again, a bad throw. Sadler to punt. Kick is up, and it is not deep. It is rather short. Fair catch called for and taken by Kevin Bow at the 40 yard line. So the punt. Travels just 34 yards, no return, and a flag was thrown on the Maryland bench. They just threw a flag on the Maryland bench. Undoubtedly, it will be unsportsmanlike conduct and put Penn State in Maryland territory. Well, I just said, I was going to say, they have excellent field position. The first club is coming back in, and I'm sure they're going to rise to the occasion after seeing what the second offensive unit did. Why they threw the flag, I have no idea. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Maryland bench is the call. Well, what do you, can you think of anything, Stan, that they would have to complain about? It was an incompleted pass. Having the, I can't. I don't know if there was a particular circumstance. I have an idea about the language used. Well, you know, they usually don't penalize you, but I don't know the coaches. 
They'd be walking up and down all day, you know. But uh, usually some kind of an event occurs first. Yeah, here come the Nittany Lions with a real opportunity now to take a, I don't know about commanding lead the way this game has gone, but to feather their nest a bit and pad the margin. They'll have it first down and 10 at the Maryland 45-yard line. And now Bobby Ross apparently explaining whatever displeases him to the referee. The call was made by one of the other officials wearing a black hat. And, of course, from Maryland's standpoint, they're all wearing black hats at this moment. Well, it's a good thing he wasn't wearing a blue hat. It was really good. <laughs> All right, as you can see, Maryland picked up 291 yards. That's to my back. I don't know. I'm going to call that. Will a man go on the field or not? No, I don't call it. He's going on. A substitute? I'm looking this way. I'm going to guess here, George, that they say that Penn State had 12 men on the field. Possible. But I'll tell you what, if they saw it, they got awfully good eyes because it's very difficult to pick up from ground on level. Well, you heard the official explain that my back's to it. And he couldn't see it, whatever it was they were complaining about. In any event, after the punt of 34 to the Penn State 40, the fair catch called for and taken by Kevin Bow at 15. So Penn State has the football, first down and 10 at the Maryland 45. And now... The Terrapins call timeout to get themselves in order. And that is very costly when you're behind. That leaves them with just one. And you have to wonder about the thinking that goes on under those circumstances. That is just not a smart thing to do. Obviously, Stan, uh, but the, you know, the heat of the emotion sometimes dictates the, the, uh, the action out there. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 29, Maryland 24. We'll be back right after this. Here comes Penn State, 14.47 to play in the football game. They're in a single wing to the left side. Warner, the deep back. And they give us to Warner. Joel Cole. To the 42-yard line. I stand what they did that time. It's the same formation that they ran that fullback sweep a few times with Williams. This time it's Cole's back there, and this time they try to get up the middle. They made good yards. Call it a gate of three. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Pete Koch hurt on the play for Maryland, number 79. He's coming out of the ball game. Kurt Warner, we have been told has a rib injury he's being iced down sat out most of the third quarter but now apparently is back in the football game well that's that's 29 that's washington okay. i don't think they'll put the uh, warner back in unless it's, uh, they get near the goal line. nichols on a wing to the right black lips to throw man open it is mccloskey at the 20 and down to the 19. McFadden made the tackle, but tight end McCloskey was wide open over the middle, and Blackledge hit him for a first down. That's the way you throw the football. They move out, throw to the outside receivers, come back to your tight end, they're double covering the wide people. They're in a double wing formation. He's tall, he's ranged, he's got good speed, and he runs good routes. And again, Penn State is going primarily with a second string offensive line. Dave Laub, Jerome Wilson, among others. First down, 10 yards to go, Penn State. Tony Mumford with a hole up the middle. He gets down to the 16-yard line. It'll be a gain of three and bring up second down and seven. Jim Joyce made the tackle. Stan, you asked me a question before. When I thought that Penn State would start wearing them down, I, I took a guess about the middle of the fourth quarter, and that's what seems to be happening now. They, they're really in command of the line of scrimmage. And the time of possession in the third quarter, you can see nearly four to one. Second down. Seven yards to go, Penn State at the 16-yard line. Coles is the lone back behind Blackley. Wing to the left. Here's the pitch to Coles. He's got a hole, gets down to the 10-yard line. Joel Coles, pitch right, getting down to the 10, inside the 10, and very close to a Penn State 
First down. Stan, I never saw a more classic example of a defense tiring as, the, as, as their opponents have been shuffling two different units in, and now that's the Penn State's second unit, and they're really blowing the Maryland defenders off the line of scrimmage. They bring in the sticks for the measurement. It'll either be third and short, or they'll have the first down and goal at the nine. And they are just shy, a couple inches at the most. You can't talk about the backup offensive line enough. Offensive linemen don't get much credit as is, but when they're backup, they get hardly You any. know what's very impressive about what they're doing is their cohesion. They're coming off the ball as a unit. They're not making any errors. Now, this is a big play because Joe would be almost forced to go for the field goal Let's here go. if he doesn't make his first down. Short, Hayden, Lau, Bartek, and Wilson. Third down, three inches to go for the first down. Mumford and Coles. Blackledge passes, touchdown! Did he give him possession? Yes, yes he, he did. Had, he had Kenny it. Jackson. Yes, the referee said he had it long enough. Touchdown. Audible. It was an audible. We saw Kenny Jackson out there one on one. He's tough to cover one on one. Man, he runs a quick post, gets inside the defender. The ball is there. He has to hold it on. One, two, down he goes. Touchdown. He was in the end zone. Gil Hoffman offered the hit. But Jackson had possession long enough for the six points to count. Now Penn State is up the lead to 11 points, and Manka will try to tack on the extra point. Kick is up. The kick is good. So the Nittany Lions pick up the touchdown, and there's a timeout of the action with a score. Penn State 36, Maryland 24. We'll be back right after this. Simmons and Quander back deep to receive the kick. Maka really booms it. Look at this one. It's out of there. He hit the long ball that time, and Maryland will start out at the 20. Everybody gets pumped up when things start going well. One thing this game has proven, that there is depth on the offensive line because the second unit performed well, taking into consideration that the Maryland defense has been out there an awfully long time. Well, just the idea of, of coming back and keep coming back and then start dominating the game is what coaches feel builds character. And we'll remind you, Maryland did lead in this game by a score of 24 to 23. Now it's Maryland's turn to attempt to come back. A lot of time left in this ball game. Receivers flank either side. Pro set backfield. Here's the pass that is tapped up in the air and it is incomplete. Walker Lee Ashley batting down his second pass of the ball game. Set it up had there been someone in the area for a possible interception. Well, that, 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 uh, that's coached. You know, when they come on that quick outside rush and they see that quarterback take that two-step uh, step drop to try to get the quick out, they're told to get their hands up. He did a great job of it that time. Penn State shuttling players in of the second unit also on defense as well as his offense. Carmen Massi Antonio has played extremely well. Here's a Siason rolling out of the pocket firing sideline it is caught at the 29 yard line. He may be close to the first down Russell Davis. Looks like he's a bit shy. He's going to be about a half yard shy. It'll be third down in less than a yard. This is Siason is very impressive. He's a tough dude to get down. It's about the fifth time there's a rush. Then he sprints to his left a little bit, puts the ball right on the target. Both feet, one, he's got one foot in, that's all you need. Good call by the official and a nice job by Russell Davis who got the one foot in bounds, absolutely. This kid is a terrific receiver. He's caught passes for 165 yards today. Six receptions, two touchdowns. Third down in inches for Maryland. Esiason sneaks in, he's got it. He crossed the plane to the 30, that's all he needed. And he's got the first down. So Maryland <coughs> picks up that first. They'll be first and 10 just outside their own 30. 11.45 to play. Penn State leads it by 12. 36-24. Boomer Esiason, 6'4", 198. He's thrown for a couple of touchdowns today to Gene Day, uh, Ru Russell Davis. Joyner, looking for a hole, finds one, gets out to the 35 and near the 36. Call it a five-yard game. Rookie Alexander, freshman, I should say. Rookie, I guess, is all right. John Walter, 
who again was just switched to defense this week in practice. It is a gain of five for Joyner, who has been rather quiet in the second half, but again, the contributing factor there is they haven't had the ball. They're all big plays that they've uh, scored on. Second down and five, Maryland with their own 35. Man in motion near side is Russell Davis. Pitch, Joyner, 38, 39, near the 40. It'll be third down and less than a yard to go for the first. John Walter again in on the tackle. Well, I think Penn State be quite happy to let, to let Maryland just keep running that ball and kill as much time as they possibly can because uh, they're not getting hurt on the run that much. It's, it's these long bombs that uh, Maryland has burned them with. Looks like Maryland would like to grind a little bit out, first of all, to give their defense a rest, second of all, to get in position to, to throw those kind of passes. Third down and a yard to go. Man in motion. Here's the give off. He's got that first down out near the 32 or 42 yard line. First down Maryland. Carmen Masi Antonio again making the play. He's been outstanding this afternoon when he got an opportunity to get in there. He certainly has. John Nash, rugged fullback, 6'1, 200, but a good blocker. And you talk about Joyner's performance. Let's not leave Nash out of that because the fullback has got to block. Third down conversion. Both. Pretty good. Maryland 8 for 13, Penn State 6 for 14. Now they've got a slot right. Back to throw on first down is Esiason. He said he gets away, pass over the middle, it is complete, and out to the 49-yard line. The fullback, John Nash, Harry Hamilton, the hero, made the tackle, but it comes out to a 7-yard gain. It'll be second down and 3 for the Terrapins. Scott well, Radisek also in on well, Let's watch this. Once again, Esiason's in the grasp of 98 Kelly. Got him by the side. Still just steps up and gets the ball off. Makes the completion. He's 6'4", 200 pounds, and he's got strength. Bill Paterno watching on anchors to sleep. 9.15 to play. Scribner in motion. Here's the give off the joiner, and he makes a solid run for a first down to the Penn State 45-yard line. Ken Kelly made the tackle, but again, Maryland picks up a first down. It is their third first down of the drive. They started on the 20 after the kickoff from the Penn State touchdown. Well, Penn State's going to be very cautious now, Stan, especially at this juncture in the game. They're willing to keep everything in front of them and let Maryland kill as much time as possible because it takes two scores to beat them. First down and 10 yards to go. Joyner again, this time to the right side, gets outside. He's to the 41-yard line and a good, solid shot. Kelly really knocked him off his feet. So did Al Harris, but it is a gain of five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. The clock runs, 8.35 to play in the football game. Penn State leading by 12. And you have to give hats off to Joe Paterno because he is playing a lot of second people, as it were. The front line is back in. Second and five. They got beyond the safety now. He's going to go deep. Wide open, it is Davis again. And Davis has the first down to the Penn State 22-yard line. Guy's unbelievable. Roger Jackson and Biondi make the tackle, but again, Russell Davis hurts the Nittany Lions. Well, that was a great throw, though. He just put that right. Perfect throw. Straight drop back action. Now, Biondi is shift to safety. He's short. They're running Davis left to right, right in front of him. Now, Biondi gave a little too much ground playing his zone back there. They better tighten it up a bit. First down and 10 yards to go. Maryland at the Penn State 22. Esiason throwing. Cut. Oh, it's dropped. Russell Davis had his third touchdown catch right in his hands. And miracle of miracles, he dropped it. Another great throw, but he beat Roger Jackson too quickly to the inside. And beyond, he was just a little late getting over there, or else it would have been another six. Those are not bad statistics for a season for some people. And he could have upped it by one in the reception and touchdown category. Second down, 10 yards to go from the 22-yard line. Esaias in the throw. Rushed out of the pocket. He's got room to run. He throws in the end zone. Overthrown and incomplete. Intended for Scribner, but well overthrown. It'll bring up third down and 10. Yeah, this is an interesting coaching point. When you're going to rush three or four people, those outside people cannot get too shallow when you got a quarterback with his mo mobility. He's rolling out and putting the whole secondary in a bind. He almost completed that one. You've got to contain that quarterback and keep him to the inside. Well, there's Atkinson, but I can guarantee you, Maryland will not go for a field goal here. 
because even if they were to make it, it would still put them nine points behind. So now, your ball game may rest on the next two plays. You might see the blitz here. Robinson, deep there he safety. Comes. Here's the blitz. It's a screen. Joyner's got it. Missed tackle. 20, down to the 16. Fumble. And I believe that Maryland recovered, and they got the first down out of it at the 11-yard line. Russell Davis fell on the football. It would have been fourth down and five yards to go, but when Joyner fumbled... But this is a good call. It's a screen. They anticipated blitz. Here comes Harris, but this is poor tackling. He's get, he gets hit from behind, uh -oh. shakes off a tackle. It's good running. They got him hemmed in here. The ball kicks out. It's the second time the ball's fumbled forward for Maryland and, and giving him a first down. Mark Fruhan is the man who had him and let him go. They get a break on the fumble forward. They would not have had a first down. First down and 10 just outside the 10. Joyner, sweep left, blocker ahead of him. He cuts in to the five, three, touchdown, Maryland. Willie Joyner, a 10-yard run, and a beauty it was. And Maryland is within six. Now, this is, this is poor defense. He's tired, this Joyner is, yet he's unable to cut back. He was forced to the inside. There's no inside pursuit or lateral movement to shut off the cutback. 7-11. How about those four numbers as an omen? To play in the game, Atkinson to attempt the extra point. It would bring them within five. It's good. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 36, Maryland 31. We'll be back right after this. Penn State offensively has used a lot of replacement people. It is hot. But defensively, they've done the same thing. When you're attempting to protect the lead, do you do that? Well, if you feel it's the necessary thing to do because of the, the, the uh, heat situation, but the problem is not that. It's not fatigue with the defense. They're overrunning the ball carrier. They're not pursuing at the right angle. And let's give credit to Joyner. He's a great back and he's doing a great job today. But they have uh, had the quarterback in their grasp at least four or five times and let him escape. Penn State was ready for the onside kick, but Atkinson booms That's it away. Ball. And Kevin Bow will down it there. So Penn State, with 7-11 to play, will take it at their own 20. They lead by five points. The, the point I was trying to make is not necessarily fatigue, George, but you go with second-team defensive people when you're trying to protect not only a lead, but a ball game. Well. As Joe often says, sometimes he doesn't really consider a first or second team. If they're playing well, he'll keep them in there. Uh, however, as I say, they've made it, the defense has made more mistakes in this game than I've seen them make in five or six or seven games in the years previous. First down and 10 yards to go. Penn State protecting a slim five-point lead. Give to Cole, our Skeeter Nichols brother. He's out to the 25-yard line and a nice run by Skeeter Nichols. Eubanks making the tackle. Five yards at a crack. That's what you're looking for now. I think Maryland has one timeout left. They do. And Penn State has no timeouts left. So I said to you, that might be a factor in, in the latter minutes of the game. Second down. Five yards to go. 640 to play. Again. The eye backfield. Blackledge to throw. He's looking to the sideline. Caught! Greg Garrity again to the 45-yard line, and there won't be a bigger first down in this game. Well, it's a great throw under the circumstances. Your defense is not holding the opponent. They're constantly coming back and scoring. It's in a dangerous area. You're only ahead by five. It shows great poise to a perfect pass for the first down. Let's take a look. Great reception by Gary. Lendl Jones trying to knock him out of bounds, but not before the pickoff and a first down. Boomer Esiason, what a game he has played. Great game. First down and 10 Penn State, their own 45. The clock stopped at 631. Here's the pitch to Williams. Cuts inside, picks up four. And a gain of four on first down, second down and six. At this point, that's what you're looking for. But he, he got a great block. Number 43 came in from his outside corner position and blitzed. I believe it was Kahn's, Bill Kahn's attack, or picked him up, 
and Williams smelled it all away, made a nice inside cut for a good game. If you're wondering where Kurt Warner is, in the third quarter, they were putting some ice on his rib cage. So it's a rib area, some kind. Skeeter Nichols, the tailback. Williams, the up man. It's Nichols. Gets a nice hole to the 45, and inside the 45 to the 44, and a first down for Penn State. Good, tough, hard running by Skeeter Nichols. Well, it's an offensive game. It's turned completely around from a defensive football game to all offense by both sides. And the clock continues to run. Five minutes, 40 seconds to play. Penn State leads it by five. Corvino's but coming out of the game, and what a game he played. Magnificent game. This Maryland team is going to beat some folks this year. First down and 10, Penn State at the Maryland 44-yard line. Williams. Straight dive play to the 41, a gain of three. Second and seven, Mark Duda making the tackle. Penn State would really like to get a score on this drive because they give Maryland the ball back the way they have moved it. A minute would be enough time. Well, the way they're running the football right now, I mean, they're in command of the situation. But Todd right now is operating with such confidence they might throw the ball. Slot to the right with Jackson and Garrity. Second down and seven from the 41. And wide open. McCloskey's got it. Then at the 25-yard line. Mike McCloskey has become a major factor in this football game. Which he should. You have to have the tight end in the game because when you got great wide receivers with speed, Especially if you put a both to one side, go over to defend that. You get the tight end one on one. It's just a straight out. He's got good speed for six foot six, but the ball is perfectly thrown. Great pass, great reception. A 16 yard gain for a first down at the Maryland 25 yard line. 4.38 to play. Penn State leads it 5 5. But the Nittany Lions are driving. Nickel cuts back and he gets down to the 21 yard line. That's but it. a gain of four on first down is what you're looking for. And Skeeter Nichols looks very good. He's making quick cuts, quick cuts. He's reading the offensive line blocking, making quick decisions, and making good yards. Skeeter Nichols is a sophomore, six feet, 202 pounds, from Cambridge, Maryland. Another Maryland boy coming back to give problems to his home stater. Second down and six. Penn State at the Maryland 21. Williams, right tackle, inside the 20 to the 18. Call it a gain of three. That brings John up Williams third down carry. and three. Boy, is that a weary bunch of defensive terrapins out there. Penn State offensive line is totally in command. It's, a, it's just a total reverse, reversal from the first half. Interestingly enough, however, as tired as they are, and they have spent most of the second half on the field, the Maryland defense has not given Penn State an easy touchdown. Oh, they, they've been flooring and fighting and scratching. Third down and three. Nichols on a wing left. Williams behind Blackman. Comes that sweep. Great Williams cut. cuts inside. He will not get there. He got to the 16. It brings up fourth down and more than a yard to go, about a yard and a half. Well, they have to go for the field goal for the obvious reason. That would give them an eight. If they make it, it would give them an eight-point cushion. And the ball is right right in the middle of the field. It shouldn't be too difficult. All right, they'll set it up. Strang holding at the 26. Makes it a 36-yard field goal. Very slight angle to Manka's left. Ball's up, and it is good. Massimo Manka makes yet another one, and Penn State ups their lead to 39-31 with 2.44 to play. So now, you presume the best Maryland can do is tie. Stan, I know Penn State hasn't had the punt this half. Has Maryland punted? I don't think so. Has it been a punt in the second half? Early in the third quarter, Kevin Bow called for a fair catch, and they had the unsportsmanlike conduct. Right, that's the only punt in the entire second half by both teams. I hope Ralph is walking along the sidelines because rigor mortis is going to set in. That he would indicate it was an offensive shot. Jack Amaro has only punted twice in this game. One of them was a 55-yarder. But they just haven't needed him because uh, everybody's scored almost every time they've had the football. 
Well, Maryland will get their shot. There's been so much talk about Deke and the offensive line do that and so on and so forth. One element that is extremely solid, George, is the Penn State kicking game. I'll tell you what, those defensive players, they've got to hide for a day or so before Joe sees them because uh, not too many people put 31 big ones up against Penn State. Well, Wander, who has got speed but has not been able to get off that big one, is back deep to return at his own five. Monka approaches high, deep. Wander, six yards deep, will stay right there. He had thoughts about that, but Simmons went up to him and said, are you nuts? Stay there. So Maryland, 80 yards away from an opportunity to at least tie the football game. 2.44 to play. Maryland at their own 20, first down and 10 yards to go. As Ponder comes to the sideline, I'm sure unfulfilled. Well, let's look at the group in there. Radisson, Ashley, Harris, Kelly, Ofar, Gattuso. By and large, the first unit. It is the first unit. First down and 10. Esiason, the throw. Looking, he's firing the bomb. It is overthrown and incomplete for Lewis along the sideline. And he put that ball in the air about 45 yards. Notice the contrast in height between Lewis and Biondi. Now, Dan Biondi's a fine defensive football player, but he's short of stature as it goes in this league. And I think in the rest of the season, you will see uh, offensive teams try to get line up their receivers on him and try to hit him deep. Mike Lewis. The flanker is a senior, six feet tall, 189 pounds. Second down and 10. Maryland with their own 20. Trailing by eight. 238 to play. Play fair. Esiason looks deep again for Washington. Davis, rather, pass interference will be called. Roger Jackson interfered. And I'm not sure that he had to. I don't think Davis would have no, been I able think to the ball is over. So I just don't understand. Uh, now, Isaiason, it's only a two-man rush, actually. They're going to let him throw and cover the zones. But I, I can't see how they can even let a man who's just caught two touchdown passes get that far upfield without a, a, a more than one single coverage at this late in the stage in the ball game. Well, that penalty gains Maryland a grand total of 51 yards. Coupled with the first pass interference penalty, they have gained more than 100 yards in penalties. Now they're at the 29-yard line. 2.30 to play. Here's a delayed draw to Joyner, hit in the backfield, and dropped by Walker Lee Ashley for a yard loss. You asked me a question before about playing first or second strings. That's the first string in there now, and, and really today it's the first string players who've been making the majority of the errors. Ashley coming up with a big play. Scriber comes into the ball game with the play from Coach Bobby Ross for Boomer Esiason. Second down, a little more than 10 yards to go. Davis goes wide to the left. He's been murdered today. Esaias in the throw. Here's the screen. It is caught. Oh, what a shot. Scott Radisson. Really buried him along with Ken Kelly on the screen pass to Nash. That's it is no gain. It'll be third down and 10. That's a pretty good sized linebacker. 6'3", 244. Joe Paterno told me if Scott Radisson decides to get mean and tough, there'll be nobody better. That time he showed what he could do. Nash really took a shot and popped right up. Third down and 10 yards to go. 1.15 to play. Asias in the throw. He's rushed. Now he's chased. He throws anyway. It is intercepted by Penn State. Scott Radisek makes the big defensive play. And Penn State has stopped the Maryland threat. I think Penn State stopped him and fatigue stopped him. Some of those wide receivers of Maryland are so tired, they can hardly run downfield. He has all the time in the world. They only rush three, can't find a receiver, a lot of coverage, tries to get out to the flat. Radisic is there, steps in front of him, and that's about it. The pass was intended for John Nash, the fullback. Obviously, it was not a Siasen's intended receiver. 
His people were covered downfield, and there's a case, George, where the secondary did do a good job forcing them to go to the safety valve, and Radisic smelled it. I think these plays have been decided on who's the most tired. At one play, the defensive backs are tired from running the offense beat. The next play is just the opposite. Rocky Washington wide left, 108 to play, but remember, Maryland has just one timeout, and Penn State's going to get hit for a five-yard run to lay of game. Maryland can stop the clock just once. You know, it's not, it doesn't mean anything now, that delay of game, but yet, as a coach, that would infuriate me, that here's a situation, you've got to learn how to kill a clock, and you come right out, you get a delay of game, when you, this is the time you want to eat up as much time as possible. There's no reason for that. I will not wind it. That might have been one of the few bad passes that Boomer Esiason threw all day. And if he's hanging his head, he shouldn't. Played a great game. I mean, he's been run around, chased, gone out of so many scrambles and situations and hit the receivers. Been on the Blackledge will sit on it as the clock runs down to a minute even. Maryland will not exercise the timeout, at least not at this point. You see the clock. Penn State leads it by eight. Now Maryland is not going to stop the clock. That will be the ball game. Bobby Ross, in his head coaching debut at Maryland, had his team ready to play. And an offense that really generated tremendous movement up and down the field. Clock now at 32 seconds. Blackledge. Balls on the football, and well, probably that will be the last play of the game. Coach Ross, as you said, Stan, should be very proud of his team. They played a, a ranking power. They played him almost to a standstill. They never quit. Uh, the the uh, climatic conditions were very, very difficult. They were tired, and if they continue with that attitude, they're going to win an awful lot of football games. Absolutely. Year. Joe Paterno was most concerned about this game. Any coach wants to be as well prepared as possible, and... Uh, Todd Blackledge, the offensive player of the game, Todd Blackledge, Penn State quarterback. This year's award is sponsored by our good friends at Daily Juice Products, your local Subaru dealer, Anheuser-Busch, and by Westinghouse. Todd today, 18 out of 31, 260 yards, four touchdown passes. That duplicates, of course, what he did last week. So he now has eight touchdown passes in two games. Todd Blackledge, our offense player of the game you could pick out some others well I, I be honest with you as much as I like Todd and always pushed him I voted for Garrity on making the key catches in, in, in critical situations in the game so you and I agree is that right you must be smart <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure maybe we'll take one of those telepoles <laughs> yeah I thought Garrity uh, not only making great catches but at key times at key times Greg Garrity today four catches 68 yards, and they were big ones. Maybe the offensive player of the game, besides Messiah, who was uh, Russell Davis, oh. or Joyner. This will be the last play of the game, and that'll run out the clock. Maryland cannot stop the clock. Penn State, coming into this ball game, more than a two touchdown favorite, will escape with an eight point victory. But it's a win nonetheless, and a Maryland football team that may even have surprised themselves a little bit. Very true. They count it down. Todd Blackwood shaking hands with some of the Maryland players. The defensive player of the game against Maryland is Harry Hamilton, the hero. This year's award is sponsored by our good friends at Daily Juice Products, your local Subaru dealer, Anheuser-Busch, and by Westinghouse. Harry Hamilton today intercepted a big pass off a tip, took it off the shoot top, and ran it back, setting up a Penn State score. Plus, he made an awful lot of tackles today. He's standing, he's all over the field, and he played a great game. Harry Hamilton, our defensive player of the game. That's the end of the game. The final score, Penn State 39, Maryland 31. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 